I found myself waking up on the beaches of the island for what I thought would be just another playthrough, but something was different this time. New powerful creature variants now roam the island, obliterating everything in their path. And I'm gonna spend 100 days here with these new creature variants. And I'm gonna defeat the Alpha Dragon, Broodmother, Megapithecus, and the Alpha Overseer with them. Hopefully I'll actually be able to keep that promise this time, unlike in my last 100 days. Day one and- oh, 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 oh no, the recording's messed up. So yeah, let me just fix that, and okay, we should be good now. But I wasn't actually good. Oh, ow, ow! Yeah, those are Alpha Dilos. This mod Primal Chaos introduces a tier system of dinos that I'll put on screen right now. The order of the tiers goes vanilla, be normal dinos, then beta, alpha, elemental, advanced elementals, mythic slash legendary, demonic slash angelic, and primal chaos slash primal light dinos. This is all sounding very familiar. Yeah, I can't even lie to you guys, this is basically a primal fear ripoff. I might even throw it into the video title. My primal fear videos are some of my most popular. Alright, I'm gonna stop dissing the mod now and actually play it. Alright, I guess let's just start with a note run. Since I'm gonna be on foot for a little while since I just spawned in, and weaker threats that I wouldn't usually worry about are canal spawn and super strong, I need to get some levels. So I made my way over to the first explorer node that I was close to, and that got me up to level 11. But I then spotted the mortal enemy of every bob when he first spawns in. Oh my god, there's raptors. There's ra- Oh, and they're already on me! Come on, come on, come on. I need- I need this turtle to- sh No! No! Can I get away? Come on, turtle. Put up a good fight. I have broken boats, like- can barely run. And I did manage to escape because the turtle was actually an alpha variant, meaning it was five times stronger than normal, and it would have actually survived way longer if not even kill the raptors. But I think I'm gonna stay out of the forest looking for explorer notes for a while and start getting some basic tools. And that led me to punch a tree as you do until I had 10 thatch and one wood to craft a stone pickaxe, which I then quickly used to farm even more thatch and wood as well as a piece of flint to craft a stone hatchet. This is progress, baby. Anyways, after that, I farmed a few more resources and then crafted a reusable spear. I'm playing with a few other quality of life mods that I'll have linked in the description. Anyway, this reusable spear is actually going to be the key to my success, mostly because it outputs a decent amount of damage and I have an infinite amount of them. But that was not good news for this dodo because I used the spear to kill it for my first high. Immediately after that, however, I discovered that there was beta cloth armor, which seems to be stronger than normal cloth armor. And all I need to craft a set of it is to get some beta hide, which I get from killing beta dinos. And after that, I killed a dilo, but food was starting to become a more pressing issue. Let's make this campfire. And while I was waiting for some food to cook, I discovered the different kibbles that you need to tame the different tiers of dinos. Oh, there's different, there's the different kibbles right here. Beta kibble. All right, so kibbles are going to be super important to taming different tiers of dinos. But moving on, I crafted myself some reusable bolas, so I'm now pretty safe from being attacked by raptors. All right, we now might be able to fend off some raptors if they come at us. But instead of taking down raptors, I took down an alpha parasaur. You're still able to bola creatures even if they are bigger than normal because of their tier, which honestly makes them pretty easy to kill still. <laughs> Anyway, I got some alpha hide and some alpha blood, which I assume will be used to craft different types of kibbles later on. And after that, I killed a low-level pteranodon and discovered that it looks like new tributes were added in one of the mods I installed, since I got PT talons. But finally, ending off the day, I killed a beta PT after realizing I wasn't going to be able to craft any beta kibble for a while to tame it, and I then used its hide to craft my first beta cloth shirt. Day two, I looked out over the river and saw what looked to be a treasure chest, but the problem was I was freezing to death very quickly, so I won't be able to check it out for a little while, and that led me to try and actually prevent myself from freezing to death. Big shocker, I know. But I actually did craft some hide pants and boots as well as a torch, and I huddled down next to my campfire to keep me warm. But it almost wasn't enough. <sighs> <laughs> we had a good run. But to my surprise, these last minute items were enough to barely keep me from freezing to death. But I needed the heat from both the campfire and the torch, so I couldn't even access my inventory to upgrade my stats without freezing to death. But morning eventually came, and it was warm enough to put my torch away and leave the campfire side. And I then killed a nearby parasaur for its hide, and I began harvesting it. That's some good- Oh! Oh, I thought it was gonna attack me. Yeah, man, I know these alpha parasaurs are harmless, but those glowing red eyes do not give off a friendly vibe. Anyway, I crafted more hide armor to keep warm, and I also looted a white drop, but it was absolutely terrible. But more importantly, the treasure chest that I saw at the beginning of the day was now gone. Is it gone? No. So I decided to keep on progressing. Alright, I guess let's just keep killing stuff for now. But there's actually another chest, literally right there. And I looted it, but I didn't know what I got because I couldn't see it in my inventory. Anyway, I then killed a few dinos, including some meganors for Kayan, so I can only almost craft a PT saddle soon, and I also had meat spoiling in my inventory to start narcotic production soon. I've decided I actually want to tame a pteranodon as soon as possible to get off the ground, but I'm gonna need a few trank arrows to actually tame one, so I started farming narco berries by hand, but I wasn't having much luck, so I decided to knock out and tame a level 5 parasaur that was nearby, and I actually had all the resources required to make it saddle, so I did that, and I named it Monk for whatever reason, but I then farmed a few narco berries before realizing I actually need a little base of operations to start crafting the narcotics, and that led me to craft the thatch foundation, 
and a mortar and pestle. And the raw meat had pretty much all spoiled by now. And I spent the rest of the day pretty much just farming narco berries and crafting narcotics. However, I did also craft a bow and some trank arrows when I did actually get some narcotics under my belt. I finished up narcotic crafting in the morning of day three. I had 14 trank arrows and everything else I needed to tame a PT besides the saddle, but I'll figure that out later on. So I hopped on the back of Monk and set out towards the Red Obelisk and the East Coast. And I did pick up my mortar and pestle as well as a campfire before I left so I won't have to craft another one. But it only took me around 30 seconds to find my first PT, but it was only a level 50. Yeah, it's kind of mid. Just keep looking. So I kept moving down the beach in hopes of finding a higher level to tame. What is, what's glowing? I don't want to find out. I do not want to find out. Just a word from the wise from me to you guys. If you're ever playing with a mod where dinos produce their own light, make sure to approach them with extreme caution. Every time I see something like that, I have flashbacks back to Primal Fear 100 Days fighting Pecan's Revenge. Anyway, I didn't get much farther down the beach before I spent like two minutes trying to bolo this random PT out of the air so I could check its level. But when it finally did come down to the ground, it was only a level Bruh. 10. So I decided I'm just gonna cut my losses and tame that level 50 PT. I really don't want to spend any more time looking for a better level to tame. Because time is extremely precious when I have a bunch of different tiers of dinos I need to tame in this video. So anyway, I began making my way back around the Red Obelisk. But I passed a few Meganoras along the way, and I do happen to need more cut-in for a PT saddle. But while I was taking out those buggy boys, Monk was having a scuffle of his own, which he didn't end up winning because he was on passive and had the stats of a newborn baby. Yeah, Monk got absolutely shredded by a level 5 Dilo, but I guess it was an alpha Dilo, so it's way stronger than normal, but still pretty sad that he actually died to that. Anyway, I put the Dilo down with ease because I have weapons to defend myself, unlike Monk, and I then harvested it for a measly 3 hide and 2 alpha blood. Oh, Monk. We're definitely taming that level 50 now. Yeah, I don't really have any option anymore. I'm gonna tame that bird. So I made my way back down to the PT's location while killing some more bugs along the way. And I knocked it out with a bola and only a few trank arrows. But right after the bird knocked out, I had to fight an army of compies. And one of them was an alpha compie, which was surprisingly strong. Like, so strong, I literally couldn't kill it. I had to swim across the river to finish farming the resources for the bird's saddle. I don't think I can understate how mad it made me that I wasn't able to take out this compie. So I really need to take flight as fast as possible or I'm not gonna survive down here for much longer. But moving on, I took down more dinos like Parasaur and Titan Drones, and I also got some Explore Notes to boost my level so I can actually craft a PT saddle. And I even looted a Blue Drop which gave me some Kyan armor as well as a toilet and an Ankylo saddle. Anyway, I kept killing dinos, but when I killed a Parasaur, a freaking Christmas present flew out from its dead body. Christmas present? A beaver dam? Okay, that's kind of weird, but I'll take it. And I then killed some dodos, and a treasure chest flew out of its dead body. And I found that the loot was going into my cosmetics tab in my inventory. And I got a pair of dodo slippers, which looked absolutely hilarious. But I also did get a pet fish that literally just takes the place of your head, and it also looks stupid. But more importantly, my PT was finally finished taming, and I named him Flappy. But I still needed to get some fiber to craft Flappy's saddle, hence why I'm picking bushes right now. However, I could barely fly on Flappy, because it didn't have the best stats as taming a level 50 isn't that good, obviously. So I got my bird buddy some levels by getting explore notes and pumping weight until I had around 250 weight and just under 300 stamina. Day 4 and I was flying north, but I wasn't flying aimlessly. I was flying towards my new permanent base location. I want to build on that one plateau that overlooks the redwoods. Really specific, I know. But if you have some experience in Ark, you probably know where this is. I didn't have much reason for wanting to live here besides the fact that I've never built here before and because it shouldn't get that hot or too cold. Yeah, so it's not the best motivation for building here, but I don't really care. I'm gonna build the best base you've ever seen here. Anyway, I thought the area was safe, but pretty much as soon as I arrived, I saw a glowing raptor just below the plateau. I'm pretty sure it's a volcanic raptor, which means don't go near it. But I think I should be fine as long as I stay up here. Anyway, time to get to work. And that first started with me taking out a parasaur that was unlucky enough to spawn here. This is my land now. Anyway, I then unlocked the Chaos Forging Grim. I wanna craft one of these as they are very good at smelting metal. And you also need them to craft the other types of metals in this mod. And even better, they cost the same as a normal refining forge, so there is no downside to making this forge. Seriously, if you're playing this mod, make one of these bad boys. But with this goal in mind, I plopped down two thatch foundations and my mortar and pestle to store some of my items. I needed some more hide to craft a forge, so I killed a few local weaklings and farmed the rest of the resources, and just like that, boom, I have a chaos forge. The forge is also red, so it looks even cooler. Anyway, I discovered the different types of metals you can get by combining smelted ingots and different types of blood. But I can't do any of that mixing blood with metal until I actually have some metal, so I need to actually get that. But I first farmed some wood to fuel my campfire that'll cook me more food while I get some metal. And I then made my way out of the base towards the volcano and I farmed 30 raw metal, which actually took forever because these stone tools actually suck. So I'm gonna get rid of them as soon as I can. But anyways, I made my way back to my base and spotted an absolutely terrifying sight. What? Something tells me about how that Rex looks 
how big it is and how fast it killed that dip loads that I don't want to mess with it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a volcanic Rex. That's 10 times stronger than a normal Rex. So that's basically a giga right below my base. And I'm also not sure if these dinos have any special abilities yet since this mod is pretty new, but I don't really want to find out. So anyway, I got the metal into the forge and got it smelting. And it definitely does smell faster than a normal forge. But I don't want normal metal tools. Those are for brokies. I want to craft beta metal tools, but I'm going to need some beta blood and hide to do that. And that led me to put an ungodly amount of spears into this beta turtle until it died finally the turtle took a while to kill but i got all the beta hide and blood i needed from it but i first needed to craft a chaos smithy to actually craft the beta tools but it doesn't require anything special to craft so i made it pretty easily and look at these shiny new green tools i have but that's not the only cool thing about them they farm more resources than normal tools and i approve of the new tools because they were miles better than my stone tools oh yeah this is good this is very good. And the pickaxe works great with the metal nose as well. There we go. That's some metal farming now. Anyway, I finished up the day by putting more metal I farmed into the forge. Progress is being achieved, my viewers. Speaking of progress, I need a spyglass to find dinos to tame to keep progressing. I know that's a stretch, but I really need to find a spyglass, okay? So I flew out to the volcano to get the crystal for it. And I got just over 50 crystal for the spyglass and whatever I need for the future. But that's not the only thing I saw in the volcano. My nervous system got a shock of adrenaline when I went to get back on my PT and fly home when I spawned a giga inside the wall. It couldn't move, and I don't think it could actually see me, but if that thing got free while I had my back turned farming crystal, it would have been game over. But luckily, that didn't happen. So I returned back to my camp safe and sound, and I then crafted my modded spyglass. This bad boy will show me dino stats, their torpidity, and possibly even their social security numbers. Anyway, after that, I decided to craft a normal smithy so I can craft some more vanilla items. And this was also made very easy with my new beta tools. However, I think it's time I start looking for a better PT now, as I can easily identify levels. Flappy's good and all, but let's be honest, he's not good at all. But while I was out and about, I first stole a beta dino egg, which I can use to make kibbles later on. But more importantly, I did confirm that the glowing rex below my base is indeed a volcanic rex. What, what is this? A volcanic rex. Level 60 has 46,000 health. Okay, not going near that. Quickly after that, I looted a green drop, and I got some trank arrows out of it and some raw prime fish meat. And I actually took that meat back to my base and cooked it right away in case I needed it for an imprint or something in the future. And I also used some beta blood I had to turn into beta ingots. And I used those ingots to craft me a beta sickle, which is making farming fiber much easier. But it was actually kind of terrible, to be honest. <laughs> so it probably would have been in my best interest to just craft a normal sickle, but what's done is done. Anyway, I've decided before I go actually looking for a better PT to tame, I want to secure my base area a little more. I don't want to spend a ton of time taming and then get ran through by a rogue raptor. So that led me to go on a little murdering and then farming spree, and I crafted up a bunch of spike walls and a wooden gate to section off part of the plateau. I plan to expand my compound later with walls and spikes, but I don't have the resources or the dino power to do that right now. But now that that's on, let's go do some taming. I started flying westward, along the northern river where a ton of PTs spawned. And there were a ton of PTs, but no good levels. That was until I got to the very end and I spotted a level 130 which is perfect for me. It took a little while for it to land but once it did it landed on a cliff where no other diners could get to it. Perfect. This is actually perfect. And it knocked out super easy with my crossbow. I don't think I mentioned I crafted one, but I did. After I got the bird knocked out, I left to get it some prime meat. And there was a low level diplo nearby, which was once again perfect for me. It didn't survive too long after I spotted it. And I fed the unconscious PT before the end of the day, but it still wouldn't tame for a little while. Day six started oddly. Why is there so many brontos in the river? I decided to keep flying up and down the island's rivers, looking for another high level PT to breed with the current one I'm taming. But I didn't really have any luck finding any high level normal PT. PTs, but I did find a high level beta PT. Beta level 145. Oh, I hope that stays alive. Like, it's probably gonna die to that Rex. So, yeah, I didn't find anything I could tame for now, but I definitely have to see if that PT's still around when I get my hands on some beta kibble. So, anyway, I flew back towards the Redwoods to where my PT was now tamed and flew it back to my base. And I also looted a purple drop on the way back, but it was garbage. And once I finally did make it back to my base, I bred the two birds. Now, obviously, the baby won't be good if I hatch it, so I wanted the egg for other purposes. But for now, I need to level up my new. PT. And that started with me getting an explorer note right below my base. And I then set out for the volcano because I knew there was one on the inside of it I could get pretty easily. But there was a roadblock, or a sky block, I should say. What is that? No, no, no. Other way. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was breathing pretty hard into the mic right there. I almost had a panic attack. Luckily, whatever that thing was, it didn't see me. But by seeing how fast it was flying, it definitely would have caught up to me if I made a mistake of getting its attention. I didn't see it for long, but for the small glimpse I got of it, it looked to be a dragon of the volcanic variant. I'm not sure if there are any other variants of the dragon, but I'm pretty sure they are all deadly if I happen to run into one. So anyway, I got the explorer now on the inside of the volcano and another one on the far side, which I got my PT up to level 275 weight and 650 stamina. But I'm not satisfied with this because I can't get that level 145 beta PT out of my head. And as you all know, I do need beta kibble to tame it, but it honestly isn't that expensive. But I do need to grow some crops. So yeah, let's farm some crops. Finally, at the end of the day, I had eight crop lines, which I placed right below my base on the banks of the river. And I flew back up to the top of the plateau to craft the intake and water tap. Day seven, I placed both the intake and tap down, making my crop plots now irrigated. But I'm still missing the seeds and fertilizer to actually make the crops grow. And I decided to tackle the fertilizer issue first. I had a toilet, which I got from a blue drop back on day three. And as I said in my Island 100 Days video, the pooping glitch for infinite fertilizer was actually patched. And I'm currently unable to tame any dung beetles since I don't have a creature or a weapon protect me inside of caves while I'm actually taming the poop bugs. So I resorted to my old method of just pooping, jumping up and down, eating, and then pooping again. It was slow and inefficient, but it's all I got right now. But it actually only took around five minutes for me to get two fertilizer in each of the crop plots, which will be enough for a little while. So now I need to get the seeds I need. And crop seeds aren't super common, so there's no way I'm going to be trying to get them by hand. I first looked at passive taming a nearby Diplo, but after seeing it required 850 hide to craft a saddle, I decided to move on to something simpler. I will not be taming a Diplo. That is 850 hide. That's insane. There was a level 75 Iguanodon that was nearby. Perfect. And the Iguanodon went down really easily. And this spyglass made it even easier with me being able to see its torpor. Oh my god, how many copies is that? But while I was fighting off those compies, I also killed a Meganora, and it dropped a treasure chest with a Meganora pet inside. And I equipped it over the fish, and it put a whole Meganora on my back, and it would flap its wings whenever I moved. But I liked having the fish on my head better, so I swapped it back out. Anyway, I then farmed berries I needed to tame the Iguanodon, and then flew back up to my base and farmed some wood to craft its saddle. And once the Iguanodon finally tamed, I saddled it up and spent a few minutes getting the two sets of four seeds I needed for each crop plot. And after that, I seeded the crop plots, and I also farmed some Narco and Mayho berries because you need those to craft beta kibble. And I then bred my PTs once again to get another egg because you actually need two normal dino eggs to craft a beta kibble. But luckily, fertilized eggs actually work to craft the kibble, or else I'd have to be waiting a while longer for my female PT to just lay an egg. I'm gonna take a leak while my crop control. Wait, enemy. I'm gonna take a leak while my crops grow. Just thought I should let you guys know that I was taking a leak while my crops were growing. That's it. Day 8, I started with crafting 4 alpha narcotics. 2 alpha narcotics combined with an arrow can make an alpha trank arrow. And that alpha trank arrow is 22 times stronger than a normal trank arrow. Though I should be able to knock out that beta PT pretty easily. But I also crafted a few beta arrows which are only 11 times stronger than a normal trank arrow but they're still very strong. But later on, I got my first rock carrots and I finally crafted my first beta kibble. Alright, let's go see if that 145's there. So yeah, I'm gonna go off and tame that level 145 beta BT now, if it's still alive. It was dangerously close to that volcanic rex. But yeah, I flew halfway across the map hoping and praying that it was still there. But to my surprise, it was actually still alive. But it was still in a dangerous area, so I'm gonna have to tame it very quickly. Anyway, after hitting an actual snipe with a bolo to get the PT to the ground... Oh, sniped out of the air. I knocked the bird out and instantly tamed it with some beta kibble. And I saddled it up and took it for a little test flight before naming it. I named it Green Lantern. Come on, is that not the most fitting name for this thing? Anyway, I flew back to my base with my normal PT following close behind me. But once again, that's not enough for me. I want to get another high level beta PT and breed the two. I think once I have a good imprinted beta PT, I'll be content. So that led me to breed my normal PTs once again and craft another beta kibble. And just like that, I was off once again looking for another beta PT. But while I was flying through the redwoods, I spotted my first electric dino, an electric dire bear. I'm not going to stick around and find out if it has any special abilities, because usually dinos with electricity can shock you off your tames. So I kept flying, making my way through the redwoods, eventually ending up at the other side of it. And it's there when I spotted the dragon I saw back on day six. Yeah, that's a little terrifying knowing that that's just flying around. That was at the volcano earlier. I was starting to give up hope on day 9 of finding a good beta PT to tame, but I should have known to look near the green obelisk earlier, because I found a level 135 out there, and taming it went even easier than last time. It was already on the ground so I could easily bowl it and knock it out. And once I was actually asleep, I nearly got prime meat to tame, before realizing you actually don't need prime meat to tame these guys, you need the beta kibble, which I had. Wait, I have beta kibble. 
But once the bird was actually tame, I tried breeding the two out there right in the open. But it didn't work because a few Dilos decided to ruin my day and their lovemaking session. I had to go full Doom Slayer on the Dilos, but in the end, I decided to finish this back in my base. But after that, I finally made my way back to my base and I acquired a fertilized beta PT egg. And I quickly started incubating the egg using the campfires to heat it up. And the bird hatched soon after, and it had good stats, so it was going to become my main transportation bird. And these things also start with an insane amount of stamina, but their weight is still pretty low. But that's the only thing I really have to upgrade on them. Anyway, I named him Green Goblin because I think it's a very suity name just like Green Lantern. And while I was waiting to imprint the baby, I looted a nearby beaver dam and killed an alpha trike for its alpha hide and blood. And I used that blood and hide to craft alpha ingots and then turned them into alpha tools like a hatchet. These tools should be able to farm even more than the beta ones. But for some reason, all the tools have the same durability as normal primitive ones. And I think that's kind of dumb because they need to be repaired a lot. Anyway, after that, I realized I couldn't use fertilized beta eggs to make alpha kibble. Ooh, fertilized beta eggs don't count. So at some point, I'm probably gonna have to go around the map and tame a bunch of small beta creatures to mass produce me eggs. I should probably tame an oviraptor since they're now overpowered. They pick up eggs from your dinos even when they're over encumbered. But moving on, I got the one imprint I needed on Green Goblin, so he now has some pretty good looking stats. And after that, I waited for the bird to be fully grown before taking out and doing some leveling by getting some explore notes. And once I got some levels into it, I decided to get some more metal because I was pretty much out of it back in my base. But as I was bringing the metal back to my base, I spotted a volcano volcanic raptor right below my base again. What uh, is, what is under my base? Yep, not gonna go down there anymore. Day 10, I made an alpha pickaxe. But I wasn't just making these alpha tools for fun. I needed them for a lot of manual labor that was ahead. Anyway, I now want to build sort of a better base because I'm kind of live. I'm kind of tired of living on those two foundations. To say it lightly, I want to build a castle, but more of a mini castle, maybe an 8x8 at most. I just want a place to have my structures and storage, and I can always expand on it in the future. But let's get to the construction of this castle. But before I even actually get to that, I need the resources to craft the structures for it. So i just like to say I'm sorry to my editors for what I'm about to do to you. The rest of the day went pretty similar. There was a whole lot of farming, whether that be rocks or trees. And then once I did actually get the few structures I could craft, I had trouble placing them. You see, I wanted four hexagonal pillars in each corner to make it more look like a castle, but there wasn't a good way to connect the walls on all four sides. So on two sides, I had to use normal square ceilings, and on the other two, I had to use triangle ceilings. So it's not exactly even, but it's the best I can do. I'm not a world-renowned arc builder, guys. But let me know if you guys actually struggle with building in the comments below, too. And if I don't see at least 100 comments in that building isn't your to either i know you're lying to me i've seen some of the builds you guys put together and let's just say yikes anyway i shouldn't be flaming you guys for your building skills because i didn't even finish the platform by the end of the day shoot i didn't even finish the outline of the platform at this rate it's gonna take a while day 11 started with me repairing my alpha hatchet once again i think it's really stupid how these tools have the same durability as primitive tools i'm gonna be repairing this thing quite a lot anyway after that i got back to work first farming thatch with my pickaxe to craft more structures then getting water because yeah you need water to live. Anyway, I kept farming until I eventually had the outline of the platform done by midday. And I did actually crash in the middle of farming ceilings, which set me back a little bit, but it honestly wasn't too bad. No. But once the outline was done, my attention moved to a stego who somehow managed to hop over my spike walls and get into my base area. So now, it's nice to know that my defenses are pretty much going to do nothing if I'm under attack. Anyway, getting back to my mini castle build, just farming that small outline of the platform actually sucked. I thought I was going to be able to farm all this by hand in a few days, but that's not going to be the case at this rate. So I want to tame an RG and eventually tame a Dodic, since farming stone is the most time-consuming and labor-intensive part of this whole process. And obviously, I want to tame a modded RG, preferably an alpha RG, so I'm going to have to farm some alpha kibble and a bunch of tranks since I have way higher torpor than a normal RG. So I got to work farming narco berries on my iguanodon then crafting a bunch of potent narcotics since I can't afford too many alpha narcotics right now. But by the time the narcotics finished crafting I was able to craft an alpha kibble since my female beta PT had laid two unfertilized eggs. And after turning the potent narcotics into trank arrows I set off. I only had just over 10 arrows but I'm pretty sure it'll be enough to take down an alpha oversized pigeon when I come across one. And I first searched the redwood mountain but I didn't find any so moved on to the base of the volcano. And that's where I found a level 90 five alpha rg which would be perfect for me but i actually need two alpha kibble to tame it and i only have one but by the time i got back to my base the same beta female pt had laid two more eggs so i was able to craft another alpha kibble and i then hopped back on green goblin and began flying out towards the alpha rg before the end of the day day 12 i shot my first trank arrow into the bird but it didn't do near as much torpor as i thought it would definitely need some stronger tranks so i needed to return back to my base to actually acquire those trank arrows but i need some more spoiled meat first to make the narcotics and i then remembered the hundreds of comments i got 
gotten on my island 100 days videos from a short time ago. Yeah, that's right, I read your comments, guys. Even if I don't respond because there's just simply too many of them, just know that I probably read it. So don't be putting weird stuff in my comments. Anyway, I was informed through my comments section that if I had a bunch of meat in my inventory and then took a dump into the toilet, all the meat would spoil. I heard if I take a poop on a toilet, all this meat should spoil. Oh! But first, I have to deal with those Trudons. I made light work of them, but they caused more damage than I could have imagined. You see, when I was originally getting jumped, they broke the toilet that I used to get the fertilizer. Yeah, I did. Oh my god. So it looks like I'm just gonna have to wait for all this meat to spoil because I'm not able to craft another toilet right now. And while I was waiting for the meat to spoil, I took the time to farm the narco berries that I also needed to craft the modded narcotics. Anyway, I made 22 alpha narcotics, which means 11 alpha trank arrows, as you need two for each arrow. And if 11 of these bad boys aren't enough to knock this bird out, I'm gonna delete my channel. But yeah, I flew back out to the RG's location and put a few arrows into it, then checked how much torpor it had. Bro, I know, I need a trap for this thing. Yeah, I didn't have enough of these trank arrows once again. But this time, I decided I'm I'm gonna make a trap to knock this thing out so I can reduce the amount of trink arrows I actually need in case I miss any shots. So moving on, I returned back to my base and stared endlessly into a smithy for a few minutes. I was probably just taking a leak or something, I don't know. Anyway, when I was back at my desk, I farmed up a simple stone RG trap I always use. I now have one stone foundation, eight walls, and one ceiling. And also a beaver dam, which I looted for some cementing paste and some silica pearls. But I still need more trank arrows. And I'm currently out of the blood, I need to craft the narcotics, so I gotta do some killing real quick. But it didn't take me too long to get the alpha blood, I needed to craft more alpha trank arrows. But I did also spot a vanilla alpha carno, that I'll definitely be back for later to power level my new RG. But now it's time to actually tame that RG. So I once again flew back to the volcano and assembled a trap on a high peak. And after a little bit of trouble getting the RG into the trap, oh, you gotta be joking. I finally got the bird trapped where I could tame it. I knocked out the level 95 in the morning of day 13, but it didn't stay asleep for long because I instantly tamed it with the two alpha kibble I had. And I named it Angry Bird because those red glowing eyes are honestly terrifying. And quite honestly, all of its stats were terrifying as well, except its weight. Man, they boost every stat except the weight. <laughs> Having good weight is really the only thing I wanted this thing for, so I could have just tamed a normal RG and it would have worked just as well. But hey, at least I'll never run out of stamina. Anyway, enough of me complaining, I need to get this bird back to my base. But once I actually got it back to my base, I was missing just over 100 cayenne needed to make it saddle. So I set back out to the mountains to try and kill some scorpions for the cayenne, but I only managed to kill one right under an electric RG before I decided to venture into a nearby cave that I knew had a ton of spiders in it. Spiders are a very good source of cayenne, but I can't take on too many of them at a time because I have some pretty weak weapons. And I also can't catch the attention of any large bats or I'm definitely dead. So I went in, but at first I was getting swarmed. Oh, get off me. However, I eventually managed to use a corner in the cave to separate the spiders and take them down one by one. And I didn't have to kill too many of them before I was able to craft the RG saddle inside the cave. But the spiders were able to destroy my leggings while I was fighting them. Moving on, I left the cave and began flying back to my base. But I was distracted by a yellow drop coming down with a ring in the river. And since I'm a loot goblin, I have to get it. And good thing I did, because I actually got some journeyman flat gauntlets. Good flat gauntlets. Anyway, once I finally made it back, I saddled on my RG and crafted a few pieces of flak armor to complete my set. So basically, I'm unkillable. Anyway, remember that alpha carno I spotted a little while ago? Yeah, time to go pay him a visit on the back of Angry Bird. And the carno was actually level 115, so it had a lot of health, but it would be no match for Angry Bird. I just had to actually commit the time to spamming left click to whittle down its health. I was still chipping down its health going into the morning of day 14. And to my surprise, Angry Bird was actually losing a decent amount of health to this carno. It was mainly his bleed attack that would do percentage amount of damage, but it should be fine. Anyway, I got the Carno down to around 4k HP out of its 42,000 max health, and I flew off to find an explorer note that'll quadruple the amount of experience I get from killing it. And honestly, I'm kind of sad to admit this, but it actually took me a little while to find an explorer note to get. I put thousands of hours into the Ark franchise, so you think I'd be able to know where all the explorer notes are, but I only know where like 10 at most are, and after that, it's just a search party for one. Anyway, I finally got a note on the side of the Redwoods Mountain after I had to use an online wiki to locate it, and the Carno didn't last much longer after I got the note. 51 Jeez, that's gonna be a lot of weight. That's exactly what I want. They're all going in the weight. Now, 51 levels into weight sounds like a lot, but after all, Angry Bird only had about 2,300 weight. That is a decent amount, I know, but I still want more. But I guess it'll suffice for now as I returned to my base and repaired my crossbow from the recent tame. So now it's time to tame a Dodic to farm some stone, because remember, I'm actually taming all these creatures to build my base. But I first decided to farm up some spike walls to protect the Dodic once I find one and knock it out. And I remember these guys are pretty hard to find and tame, purely because of the amount of dense foliage now in the game. But once I had five spike walls, I set out to tame the dodic. I had 10 beta trank arrows and a bunch of normal arrows from supply drops. I'd prefer to tame a normal dodic since they require the least amount of arrows and you don't really need a good level since all they do is farm stone. Is that a griffin? 
Whoa. I didn't know those spawn. We're definitely gonna have to tame some of those. So yeah, I was able to find some cool modded creatures, but no Dodix. I hate looking for Dodix. They're so small and you can never find them. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day searching for my future rock farmer, but I didn't spot a single one, and I'll take any level at this point. And the search continued into morning of day 15. <laughs> Oh my god, that thing's fast. That thing is so fast. That thing is so fast. But don't worry, I managed to get away okay, but those things are seriously fast. But that, folks, is why you don't scroll on Instagram in the wilderness without pausing your game. Anyway, I kept searching, and not too long after, I finally found a Dodic. What's one right there? I don't even know why I'm checking the level. I don't care. I want to be tame it. The Dodic was knocked unconscious shortly after me spotting it, and I quickly assembled an impenetrable fortress of spike walls around it. But if a Rex or Aloe found it, it's definitely dead. How many mayo berries do you need to tame? 13. I'm just gonna go farm one with my guadadon. Once I returned back to my base, I farmed the mayo berries I needed and switched back to my RG so I can carry the dodic back to my base once it's tamed. And I actually looked to see what I needed to craft some cryopods before I left, but I'm not able to craft any right now. And if it wasn't obvious by now, I actually did install the cryopod mod, which you can find below with all the other mods I'm playing with. Anyway, I made it back out to the dodic a few minutes later and quickly tamed it. And of course, I had to give it the creative name of Rock Dude. I, I, I don't know. I snatched up the dodic and flew back home. But all I needed to craft is saddle was a few pieces of stone which I easily got and boom, Dodic saddle. All right, now that we have a Dodic with the saddle, this castle should be able to be built way faster. I hope. And that was looking to be true as I spent the rest of the day farming stone with my Dodic and it was way, way better than with my hatchet. I also set up two storage boxes on the outside of the build to store resources that I needed to craft with later on. I'd farmed a decent amount of stone by the morning of day 16, but I did have to go back to farming wood with my hatchet, but my hatchet was once again having to be repaired. Why do they have such low durability? Crap, am I out of metal? So it looks like I have to go farm some metal to keep farming for this mini castle. So I took off on my RG to utilize on our first metal run together. But there was also a yellow drop with a ring on the side of the volcano that was looking very enticing to me. Oh, I, oh, wait, no. Wait, is it here? Okay, I think it's still here. It's just invisible. It's a Mastercraft crossbow. Yes. Oh, even better gauntlets. That crossbow is going to be clutch for taming. Yeah, as I said, that crossbow is going to be really good when it comes to taming. It's going to deal extra torpor, and it has a ton of durability, unlike these freaking alpha tools. Anyway, I moved back down the mountain and got the farming some metal nodes with my pickaxe. Right here, taming Ank Leo. This is poverty metal, man. Yeah, and Ank Leo is definitely the next tame on the list. Anyway, I farmed for a little while longer. All right, got a decent amount of metal. Let's head back to base. And I got the metal smelting in the Chaos Forge as soon as I returned back to my base. But I had to set right back out as I needed more alpha blood to turn the normal metal ingots into alpha ingots. And once I did that, I finally repaired my hatchet. But its full durability won't stay for long, however, because I still needed to farm wood and thatch. But this is when I remember that the giant trees in the redwoods give a ton of wood and thatch. So I made the quick flight over and started farming those. But while I was farming one of the trees, I noticed that a dodic was hiding out in a bush. Really? Y'all just hiding in this bush? When I was looking to tame you. Anyway, I managed to get a ton of wood and thatch from the trees, and I returned to my base and placed a bunch of shillings to try and finish the platform. But I did have to farm a little bit more before the end of the day, but I did finally finish the platform. Alright, that's finally the platform done, but I kind of miscalculated. I think you can see on the top and bottom side. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna take out a row each of triangle ceilings. Day 17, I implemented the change that I was talking about. I took some of the triangle ceilings off each side to make it look more castle-like. It gave the pillars a more defined shape, and I sound like a person in an HDTV show. Yeah. Alright, that looks way better. But now the rest of the day was spent farming and building, doing normal arc based building stuff. And I was pretty much just smacking trees and putting up walls. And honestly, I don't know how to make that entertaining. So if you do, please let me know in the comments. But in the meantime, look at whatever my editor is putting on screen right now. I hope it's nothing bad. Alright, honestly, this is starting to look really good. And I'm not playing with any building mods because I really want to experiment more with just the base game building as it was updated a lot in Arc Survival Ascended. But I think it's honestly coming together. I still got a lot of farming to do though. Anyway, back. Back to grinding. Yellow drop with the ring right outside my base? Don't mind if I do. Oh. You know what? I'll actually take this. That was actually a really good drop. Alright, now we got the outer walls done, but still a while away from completion. And it's still, yeah, it's still not exactly connected to the ground how I'd like it to be. Anyway, I had more building to do, and that started with me adding these slope triangle ceiling roofs on the pillars. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Alright, it kind of looks like a Minecraft castle, but uh, it'll look better, I hope. It's definitely not going to look better. Day 19 and, uh...
that a chicken? Dude, I've been working on this video for like 10 hours today. Am I seeing something? Or is that a chicken? That's a chicken. All I'm saying is I need that chicken. So I dropped my dodic back off on my base and went down and grabbed the chicken with my RG and putting it inside my base. And after struggling for a little while to figure out how to tame it, I found that you just have to press E so many times and it can be yours. And I decided to name the chicken Dinner. I honestly have no idea which mod adds this guy. I'm assuming it's Primal Chaos, but it's kind of a weird addition if you ask me. But I'm not complaining though because I now have a chicken and its name is Dinner. What more could you want? Dinner is now the mascot of this video. I don't care what you say. He will be on the thumbnail. I'll put an image of him in my discord this dinner deserves the world day 20 and the mini castle was finally nearing its final form i added some railings on the top in between the four pillars which i liked a lot all right that makes it look a little better but it's still looking pretty rough man i think i'm gonna take off the top wooden roof triangle slope things i, I just think they make the build look corny i don't know i thought they'd look good but they don't so i spent some time doing that and it pretty much took up to the end of the day but it was definitely going to be worth it yeah that looks way better i should have done that from the start but now i just need to add some walls at the bottom here and then a ramp to get in and i think the castle is pretty much done we can start actually moving in and doing stuff all right day 21 and it's time to fully connect the castle to the ground it seriously looks really goofy standing on those skinny pillars so i started placing two stone walls that i had left over but obviously that's not going to be near enough so i got back to farming stone with my dodic and rg before flying back over to the redwoods to farm more wooden thatch but i'd like to say my dodic's weight stat is starting to get up there now so i could farm a decent amount of stone while holding it with my rg and it would auto swing for me anyway i did have to beat a tree with my hatchet and pickaxe though to get the other resources. I then crafted and began placing the walls to connect the castle to the ground, and I watched the Fiomia end itself on my spike walls midway through placing the walls. That's free hide. However, I still didn't have enough walls to finish the castle. I needed more wood and thatch. But I did loot a yellow drop before I started farming those resources, and I got some metal structures, but for some reason I also got 12 metal water intakes. Who needs 12 metal water intakes? Anyway, I farmed the rest of the wood I needed and finished placing the walls that I also needed to place. And now my base is finally almost finished, but I had another problem. Hey, do you guys remember when I said maybe, maybe 15, 10 days ago where I said it wouldn't get that hot here? Yeah. I was wrong. Besides me dying to the sweltering heat, I crafted and placed the ramp so I could actually get into my base. Alright, I think my castle's pretty much done for now. I still need to put um, windows in the window frames, but I can always do that later. But now I think I can actually move in and we can finally move on to something else. And another housewarming gift spawned in. Is that another- there's another chicken. I have to tame it. I named the chicken lunch, so I now had lunch and dinner, and now all I need is breakfast. I honestly have no idea which I honestly have no idea which mod to add these, or this might just be the turkey trial event, because that is active as you can see right here. Day 22 started with me moving into my newly finished base, but I was still running low on storage space, so I made another quick flight out back to the redwoods and farmed a bunch of wood, which I then turned into way too many storage boxes, 16 to be exact. Anyway, I placed them all against the wall next to my little crafting corner, and I did have some trouble trying to place them. The first box would be at a slight angle, and then all the rest would be messed up. It was really annoying, but I finally got them all down so it's all nice and neat now anyway i got the rest of my items sorted back into my base and i picked up a few structures that were on my starting platform and after that i got some raw meat cooking and two campfires as i was starting to run low on food and i tried to fix my constant water problem by placing a stone water tap inside my base but it wasn't in range to have water come out of it i guess i'll just have to get some canteens as soon as i can moving on i want to tame an oviraptor oviraptors were changed in arc survival ascendant to now pick up your tame dino's eggs when they're dropped when they're nearby and since this mod heavily relies on having eggs to make kibbles that are used to tame different tiers of dinos, I'm gonna need more than one oviraptor. But I'm just gonna start with taming one for now. And they're pretty easy to tame, actually. You just knock one out and shove some eggs inside of them. That sounded weird. Anyway, I set out to look for one, and I actually found some random beta eggs laying around on the beach, and also two diplo eggs that'll make taming an oviraptor even faster. And I spent the whole rest of the day flying up and down the nearby beaches on my RG looking for an oviraptor to tame, but I didn't see a single one. I can find them all the time when I'm not looking for one specifically, but as soon as I want one for myself, they all decide to take a vacation to who knows where. I mean, I guess that's just kind of the story of Ark. You can never find anything when you want to find it, but I digress. However, my luck changed on day 23. Is that one? Oh, finally, man. You're coming home with me. Yeah, I actually abducted an oviraptor to tame it back inside the safety of my base. And it only took one potent trank arrow to the head to put it to sleep. Alright, now, I'm pretty sure they just eat eggs, right? Not totally sure, but... Hopefully that works. Anyway, my food finished cooking while I was waiting to see if the oviraptor would actually tame. I never actually tamed one of these things before, but I can assure you they eat eggs now. But for some reason, if you don't believe me, just watch this. Hmm. Oh, it is working. 
All right, so we should just need one more Diplo egg. Sweet. So once we get this Ovi Raptor, we can start taming other egg laying dinos and just have infinite eggs. I think I'm gonna do that. So yeah, I wanna at least tame a few beta dodos to start producing eggs so I can make some more alpha kibble. And I'm not sure if I said it yet, but I plan to use alpha dinos to fight the bosses since they're five times stronger than normal dinos and they're the last tier dinos that are small enough to actually fit into the boss fight. Believe me, I'd love to bring in some volcanic rexes or some other insane dinos in, but they're simply too big and won't be teleported into the fight. So anyway, I flew down below my base to get the crops I needed for beta kibble, and I managed to scrape together five of the green kibbles. Now, I have everything I need to tame the modded dodos, but I want cryopods so I don't have to make a ton of trips carrying them back to my base. But before I start farming the craft those, my oviraptor tamed, whom I named Egg. Anyway, I then started gathering some resources I needed to make the cryopods, since this mod allows you to craft them in your inventory. I had all the fiber, hide, oil, and metal I needed, but I'm gonna need to farm crystal and polymer. So I first flew out to the snow to try and find some penguins to kill for organic polymer, but I got distracted by a yellow drop that had a canteen inside of it. It was in the middle of an actual war zone, but I managed to run in, loot the drop, and fly out of there. But moving on, I finally found some penguins, but I got an insultingly low amount of polymer from them. And I also saw a dragonfly overhead while I was looting the blue drop, which did have a toilet inside, but I was more concerned about getting obliterated by the dragon, so I peaced out. But future me knows that there is an update that would come out not long after this clip that would completely remove dragons from the mod. This is mostly because they would cause too many crashes and glitches. So that's definitely lucky for me, as those are pretty much the bane of my existence right now. Anyway, instead of flying straight home, I flew to the top of the volcano and farmed some crystal that I needed to craft the cryopods and a fabricator so I can craft polymer. And I finished off the day by crafting spark powder because I also needed to craft a fabricator. And that led me to craft the fabricator in the morning of day 24. And it took me a little while for me to figure out where I wanted to place it, but I finally got it in a decent spot. And on a side note, I unlocked the four new tiers of kibble being mythic, legendary, demonic, and shadow kibble. These tiers were just added in the recent update while I was playing, and I know I mentioned them in the intro, so I'm hoping to tame a few of these dinos in this 100 days. So anyway, I now need to go back over to the volcano to farm the obsidian to craft the polymer. I need to craft a thing and then to craft the other thing. Yeah, I, I just need obsidian, okay? Anyway, I placed a toilet that I got from the blue drop on the way and farmed a few obsidian nodes at the base of the mountain before flying the rest of the way up. Whoa, what is that? That's definitely new. A mythic snow owl. That's gotta be so fast. How do you make mythic kibble? Uh, yeah, we're far away from making that. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not going to be able to tame that mythic snow owl for a while, but I can farm this obsidian, which is way less fun, but I do need to do it. Moving on, I got all the obsidian I needed, and I returned back to my base. But when I got back, there was another chicken inside my base, but I did tame it, and I named it Breakfast. Alright, no more chickens. I now have three chickens. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Anyway, back to doing productive stuff. I crafted 80 polymer from the obsidian I farmed. But polymer also takes forever to craft, and I wanted to craft a bed just in case I die at any point, but I didn't have the wood to make it. Fun fact, I actually haven't died yet, so I'd like to keep it that way. Maybe I can go this whole video without dying? I don't really know. Probably not. Anyway, that led me to fly over to the Redwoods to get some, but I found a mythic Megaloceros that was under attack. But instead of saving it, I killed it for myself. But once I did actually kill it, as it took forever to kill because the sheer amount of health it had, I got some items. Oh, what? What did it give me? What are these? XP potions. I will simmer it. Recharge your stamina. Or remove. Ooh. Those are very good. Anyway, I got the wood I needed and returned back to my base and crafted the bed. And the polymer was also finally done crafting, so I pulled the resources and crafted 10 cryopods. And after that, I crafted one alpha kibble as well, because I want to tame some alpha dodos as well to craft some elemental kibble. But I can only craft one right now, so I'll have to make some more later on once I have better beta egg production. But I can now finally start taming some beta dodos to produce me eggs to make more kibble. And that's what I spent the rest of the day doing. Alright, there's no way I should be able to pick this up. I was still out taming dodos in the morning of day 25 when I spotted something absolutely terrifying. Is that... Shadow Rock Elemental. Yeah. Nah. After spotting that Shadow Rock Elemental, I knocked down and tamed another beta dodo not too far down the beach from it. And I tried taming another one across the channel of water, but I may have accidentally killed it. Oh, come on. Also, if you didn't know, for female dinos to produce unfertilized eggs over time, a male needs to be nearby so they have mate boost. So don't go taming an army of purely female dinos because you'll have no eggs to show for your efforts. Moving on, I tamed three more female beta dodos, and after that, I now have four females and one male. That'll be more than enough to give me all the beta eggs I'll ever need. And I also spotted the shadow turkey that was super interesting what i don't want to know i don't know i don't want to know what that thing does anyway on my way back to my base i spotted my first demonic dilophosaurus what is 
What is that? Well, that's just terrifying to know that's right outside of my base. So just as a precaution, I moved most of my important dinos inside my base just in case that demonic dilo gets too close. And after that, I began throwing my dodos out of their cryopod. Just kidding, none of that happened because... Oh, did I just crashed, man. And when I logged back in, I was falling out of the sky, but I managed to save myself with one of my reusable parachutes. And I then returned to my base and threw out all my beta dinos like I first intended to do. And I was cryosicking most of them, but they would all wake up soon and start producing me some eggs. So now moving on, I decided I wanted to craft a refrigerated trough from the automated arc mod that I had installed. This mod adds this trough as well as a few other normal structures just with extra inventory spots or other quality of life mechanics. But to craft this trough, I need an automated arc workbench. So I pulled all the resources to craft one of those pretty easily as it only costed some hide and wood. And once I placed it, I crafted my trough as it only required some metal ingots and wood. That's honestly much better than crafting a normal trough that requires raw metal for whatever reason. Anyway, I placed the trough down but saw that it was unpowered. I guess I needed an automated arc generator to run it. And to craft that, I needed an automated arc fabricator. I know this is a lot of confusing high-tech mod stuff, but trust me, this will all be worth it. Anyway, I'm currently unable to afford this fabricator. I know, it's broke boy season, okay? Anyway, I have to do some farming. So I set out to the volcano my RG to farm metal. And crystal and then I returned home. And once some of the metal had finished smelting in the Chaos Forge, I was able to craft this tiny fabricator. What? It's so tiny. But even though it was tiny, it still worked like a normal fabricator as well as a modded one. So I ended up just demolishing my normal fabricator to get the resources back. And after that, I combined pearls and metal to craft 10 electronics. And I then combined those electronics with more metal to craft an automated arc generator. And that allowed me to finally power my base and the trough, which I then filled with raw meat and berries that I farmed with my iguanodon. And this trough had a giant range. Oh, that's a big feeding range. Okay. You see that green circle? Any of my dinos that are inside of it will get fed by this trough. That is awesome. Day 20 and now that my base is powered, I can worry about other things. And by other things, I mean metal. I really don't like doing these little metal runs with my pickaxe, so I think it's now as good as time as any to try and find an Ankleo to tame. And that started with me first crafting some modern narcotics to make trank arrows, as I really don't want to use any of these normal arrows, even though I have a lot of them. And I then crafted some beta and alpha kibble, because I really don't care which Anki I have to tame. Just not a normal one. But honestly, I think I'd prefer an alpha. So I made a few more pieces of alpha kibble, just in case. Anyway, once I finally have enough tranks where I thought I'd be able to comfortably knock out and tame a modded Enki, I set out to find one. I searched the mountains, the redwoods, the plains, and these. These nuts. I'm sorry, that's just kind of my way of telling you, I didn't find any Enkis to tame. Like, I flew around for a solid 20 minutes, but didn't find anything. Bro. That is until I found myself an Ankylio all alone. And it was a level 140. I mean, I would have tamed any level over 100, but this is nice. Like, really nice. Like, super nice. <laughs> Yeah, the Ankylio did not put up much of a fight, and it barely even tried to run, so I managed to knock it out and tame it pretty easily. I seriously do love that modded creatures nearly insta-tame with their kibble. It's really nice. Anyway, I didn't give the Ankylio a name, however, because I'm pretty sure I just forgot, but I did get the Anky back to my base, and I did have a journeyman saddle for it. I don't know when I got it, but I did. Anyway, I hopped on the back of my RG, swooped up my Anky, and then set up for the volcano to farm metal and obsidian. And I farmed a little bit of obsidian, but I farmed an absolute ton of metal. Like, an absolute ton. I finished farming the last few metal nodes on this run in the morning of day 28. I just farmed over 27 stacks of raw metal, so that should give me around... Okay, 27 times 300 divided by 2 plus the extra 55 metal. I don't know, it'll give me a lot of metal ingots and I shouldn't have to farm anymore for a while. Anyway, I picked my Anki back up with my RG and slowly flew back home as my RG was carrying a lot of weight. But once I did get there, I realized that all of my metal wasn't going to fit into just one of my Chaos Forges. So obviously, I pulled the resources and then crafted another Chaos Forge. And I placed it on the small platform above my my smithies and fabricators safe space on the floor. And once I placed it down, I crafted what I thought was a transfer gun so I could evenly split the metal between the two forges. But when I tried to use it, it picked up the structures that I was looking at. So that's definitely not a transfer gun. So after placing the stone structures back down, I manually split the metal evenly between the two forges because I couldn't figure out if I had a transfer gun or not. But I then also put just over two stacks of wood into both forges as I thought it'd be enough to smell all the metal. Now moving on, my beta dodos were finally all awake and producing eggs now. But my oviraptor wasn't in range of them, so I moved it a little bit closer to them. So I can now pretty much produce all the alpha kibble I want. But I will say the oviraptor's range for picking up eggs is super small. When I have more dinos laying fertilized and unfertilized eggs later on, I'm gonna need a few more oviraptors to keep up with them. But more importantly, now that I can produce a good supply of alpha kibble, I wanna start taming alpha boss dinos. More specifically, alpha rexes, is I wanna kill the alpha megapithecus first, and I'll also use them to take down the alpha overseer. Anyway, I don't actually have the trank arrows to be able to knock out a rex right now, let alone two alpha rexes with their insane amount of torpor. 
teleport. So I spent the rest of the day flying all around the map killing smaller alpha dinos for their alpha blood. I was still using green goblin to take down dinos for their blood, so I wasn't able to easily take down creatures that'll give a ton of blood like Paracers or Brontos because they're just too big. I was out by the green obelisk in the morning of day 29. My mass genocide on alpha dinos had taken me out there, and I'd gotten around 150 alpha blood when I decided to pack it in and head back home. But I did stop to loot a green drop on the way home, which gave me some paste, a few wooden gates, and some chowders. Anyway, I finally made my way back to my base where I crafted 24 alpha narcotics. Yeah, that's definitely not going to be able to enough to take down a high level alpha rex when I find one. So I had to farm some more narco berries with my iguanodon to craft more narcotics. I do want to tame a bronto soon because farming berries with my iguanodon is honestly kind of butt cheeks. Anyway, I was able to craft more alpha narcotics and eventually 29 alpha trank arrows after staring into the preserving bin for a few minutes. Yeah, it's pretty easy to tell when I'm either on my phone while recording or just taking a leak. Anyway, I now have 31 alpha trank arrows and 13 potent trank arrows. And I also now have 3 alpha kibble. I'm a baller like that. And speaking of being a baller, there was a yellow drop with a ring coming down right outside my base with some insane new drip for my RG. Sorry, that was really cringe. Anyway, I'm trying to say that there was a master craft RG saddle, some decent pieces of fur armor, and a flak blueprint I'll probably never craft. But now, no more distractions. I'm not gonna stop searching until I find a high level alpha rex to tame. I could probably get away with taming a bad level simply because alpha creatures are so much stronger than normal ones, but I want the most powerful army I could get. I'm not gonna let what happened in my vanilla island 100 days happen again. That was terrible. Uh, day 30 and I found a 150. Yeah, I was expecting to spend a lot more time searching for one. Anyway, it's crazy. Great that I actually found this, but looking at how much Torpor it has, I'm not totally confident that I'll be able to knock it out with the amount of Trank arrows that I have. So just to play it safe, I'm gonna fly back to my base and farm a few more narcotics because I'm really not trying to throw this tame. Anyway, I flew back across the map to my base, killing a few small alpha dinos on the way to get more alpha blood. I forgot to mention that this Rex was actually in the bottom right of the map across the sea from the Herbivore Island, so the flight time was really long. Anyway, when I did actually make it back to my base, I didn't stay there for too long, mostly because I needed to farm way more alpha blood than when I got on the way back. So that pretty much consisted of me killing parasaurs mostly since there are a bazillion of them surrounding my base. But once I finally had a sufficient amount of alpha blood, I put it all in the chaos smithy before having to farm some more narco berries with my iguanodon. Seriously, I want to tame a bronto to farm berries soon. I can't keep doing this. Anyway, I got a few stacks of narco berries, turned them into narcotics, made stone arrows, and then finally made more alpha trank arrows. Now all I gotta do is fly all the way back across the map again. But when I finally got back out there at the very end of the day, I realized I didn't have a trap to tame it. So I now have to farm four stone gates by hand. Bruh. Now, this video was recorded over the holidays, Christmas to be specific. Though there was actually a giant gap between me recording day 30 and day 31. And even if all I do sometimes is just play this dinosaur game, sometimes I forget what I'm doing. Alright, I just logged in after about like 10 days of not playing. I'm pretty sure I'm taming a Rex since I have start of a Rex trap. That's it. Okay, yeah, we're taming a Rex. Now that I know what I'm actually doing now, I have to finish farming up this trap. Alright, I have the four gates that I need to actually trap this Rex, but now I have to actually trap the Rex. Yo, why is there so many dangerous things around here? Yeah, so this doesn't seem to be the safest area to tame a Rex, and something is glowing over there, and it looks to be on fire. There was a mythic trike that was dead, but the glowing seems to have stopped, so maybe this area is safe now? I don't know, probably not, but I'm just gonna try and quickly tame this Rex. Anyway, I assembled the trap like a Lego Master Builder, but I had a lot more trouble actually getting the Rex inside the trap. I think it was a combination of the AI being too stupid and too smart at the same time. The Rex also hit like a truck when I was trying to get it in, which definitely didn't make it any easier for me. Shoot, oh my god. Yo, he hits hard. I mean, that'll be good for me once I tame him, but like... But after a little more struggle and my PT getting bit a few more times, I finally got the wreck stuck in the trap. I think I got it, but oh, that thing hits like a truck. But it's now time to knock this Rex out and make it mine. What? Um... I'm gonna go over here. I don't like when stuff glows. After moving my PT and putting a few more tranks into the Rex, it fell over like a ton of bricks, but it was unconscious. Yes! Oh, it's ours, it's ours, it's ours. Oh my god, this thing is insane. Alright, its health is insane, but its melee is kind of mid. That's fine though, its health is super good already, so we can just level straight into melee. Yeah, to say it lightly, this Rex alone is insane. And once I have an army of these things that are all imprinted, probably with good saddles, I'm gonna absolutely destroy every boss. Anyway, that's still far, far away, so for now, I picked up my gates and took the long flight back to my base. And once I did finally make it back to my base, I unlocked the Rex saddling gram. But before that, I put down some chickens, because I'm honestly getting really tired of them. They only spawn inside 
inside my base and then just run around making noise. Anyway, I was only missing a few pieces of fiber to craft a wreck saddle. So I took my baited sickle right outside my base and swung it over a few bushes. And just like that, I now have a wreck saddle. So after yoinking it from the smithy, I threw my newly tamed wrecks out of the cryopod and killed everything I could get his teeth on. Oh my, that is base. Yeah, I don't know if you can see those small green numbers on the screen right now, but this guy is putting out over 1400 damage a bite without imprint and without leveling. I would be having severe diarrhea if I was a Megapithecus right now. Anyway, I spent most of the day killing nearby dinos, collecting blood, and leveling up my wrecks. But I did also do some narcoberry farming and alpha trend crafting because you boys gotta stay on that taming boss dino grind. Day 32, and I have just under 50 alpha trank arrows and 3 pieces of alpha kibble. I think you can see where I'm going with this. I wanna tame a female alpha rex pretty soon now. I didn't start taming boss dinos until about halfway through my last 100 days and i'm pretty sure that was what caused me to go way over 100 days and honestly i don't want that to happen again so i'm getting on it this time anyway i now have all that i need to tame another rex so i got on the back of green goblin and set back out but it's looking like i'm not gonna have near the luck i had last time that's to be expected though i first checked back out by the green obelisk and where i tamed the level 150 last time in case that spot was super lucky or anything but it wasn't but however i paused the search for a good female when i spotted a few bad rexes and i realized i need to kill these ones so that other good ones could spawn in. So that led me to fly back to my base and put my current Rex back in a cryopod. And I also made the smart decision of crafting a large bear trap that should make trapping a Rex when I find it much, much easier. And after that, I spent the whole rest of the day looking for another one to tame. And I didn't find another Rex I wanted to tame, but I did have an idea. While I was out searching around Carno Island, I saw a few electric griffins. None that were high level enough to be worth taming, but I think I want to pause looking for another Rex to tame until I get me one of these bad boys. Moving around the map on the back of Green Goblin isn't bad, but being on the back of a griffin let alone a modded one will make searching for dinos way way faster so i decided to make a u-turn and start flying back to my base at the end of the day but i did make one more pit stop to tame a female alpha dodo on the way back i made it back to my base a few minutes into day 33 and i threw out my newly tamed alpha dodo next to the one that i've had for a little bit they're both females so i have to tame another male but i'm probably gonna try and tame a couple more females as well i'm gonna need elemental kibble to tame the electric griffin so that requires a few more alpha eggs i'm pretty sure i only have one egg at most right now so i need to tame a few more dodos before before I work towards taming this griffin. Anyway, I set out with alpha kibble that I already made for taming the rex so I can always make more. And I managed to find and tame a male right away, but I wasn't able to find any other females after a few more minutes of searching, so I returned home. Two females should be able to produce me enough eggs for now. But going off topic, I want an automated arc industrial cooker. I'm tired of using campfires and I need cooked pine meat to make elemental kibble, so an industrial cooker is gonna be required. But I was missing the oil, I need to make one. So I made a quick trip out to the snow and the icebergs to farm the few oil rocks there. It's so hard for me to differentiate between normal rocks and oil rocks now since they were changed in Ark Survival Ascended. But anyway, I got the oil back to my base and I was able to pull together the resources to make a cooker. I'm gonna put the grill right next to the chickens. It's cruel, but I seriously am getting tired of chickens in my base. After that, I flew down below my base and threw out my Rex out of its cryopod to farm some prime meat for kibble. And I was also getting small amounts of modded hide and blood for future use. And I also looted a yellow drop with a ring that was nearby, but I didn't get anything good out of it. What is that? A shadow Arthroplera. I don't want to fight that. That's terrifying. Anyway, I farmed some more raw prime meat and blood before going back to my base and cooking it. I did have to get some more gas, however, as the generator had run out. But I decided to first set my sights on a fridge for automated arc as well. I still had all my spoilables in a preserving bin, which isn't great, so I want to change that before I have tons of eggs and kibble. So just before the end of the day, I crafted 25 more hard polymer. Day 34, however, I started looking for more female alpha dota to tame because apparently two isn't enough for me. It took me a little while to find any because I had done a dino ripe recently to keep dino spawn incorrectly but i eventually found one in a fight so i scooped it up and took it to another beach to tame it and after i tamed that one i quickly spotted another one down on the beach but it was right next to a beta dodo that would get in the way of me taming it so i had to hit a quick trick shot on it to get it out of the way oh, baby! And yeah, after hitting that sick clip on that unsuspecting dodo, I tamed the alpha one that was right next to it. And after that, I made my way back in my base and threw out both of the dodos out of their cryopods. One did have cryo sickness though, because I'm too lazy to wait for the five minute timer. But it's legit not even five minutes since having single player settings on makes the time go down way faster. Anyway, after that, I was browsing through the chaos smithy when I spotted mythic trank darts. They're 25 times stronger than normal trank darts, so I really want some to knock out this griffin. The problem is they're expensive. I can't hit my hands on mythic blood that's needed to 
make them that easily. So I'll only be able to make a few, if that. But I did start with making a long neck so I can actually shoot the darts once I get them. And later on, I crafted my first two elemental kibble. I needed a couple more alpha eggs to get to three that I'll probably need to tame a high level electric griffin when I find one. But it was just a few minutes later when I did have the last kibble made. And after that, I have pretty much everything I needed. Okay, so I can now tame another alpha rex or an electric griffin, whichever I come across first. But I'm really hoping for an electric griffin to get around faster. So yeah, I can now either tame a rex or a griffin. And I decided to just say screw it and not get any mythic darts right now because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to knock out a griffin with the amount of arrows I have. I'll just have to find out when I find one. Started day 35 out by the northeastern mountain. I'm not 100% sure where these griffins are guaranteed to spawn, but so far it looks like they mainly spawn where RGs do. So I was making sure to circle all the mountainous regions and I'm flying out to Carno Island right now because a ton of RGs spawn out there as well. Oh! That's exactly what I'm looking for. That thing has a lot of torpor. I, I can't knock it out. Yeah, so that electric griffin would be perfect for me. It's a level 140. But the problem is that it has 140,000 torpor, and I only have 48 alpha trank arrows. And since each alpha trank arrow only does an average about 2,000 torpor, I can only output about, um... I don't, I don't have enough tranks, okay? Gotta fly all the way back across the map again, though. Bruh. So anyway, I made the long flight back to my base, and I made the decision on the way back that I'm gonna bite the bullet and farm up some of those mythic trank darts. So I made some gunpowder, which I eventually turned into rifle bullets, but even after all that, I was only able to put together two mythic trank darts. The reason they're so expensive is that each dart requires two mythic narcotics, one mythic metal ingot, and one rifle bullet. So each dart requires a total of eight mythic blood, which honestly doesn't sound like a lot, but mythic dinos have a very low chance to actually spawn so it's pretty hard to farm the blood that is needed but i'm gonna do what i gotta do to get more darts and that first started with me farming some more narco berries with my iguanodon but while i was farming the berries i spotted an elemental otter is that an otter what I have to tame that. Basically, I can get a giant kipper. And for those of you who don't know who kipper is, kipper is what I name my otter whenever I tame one. But I have a problem of actually keeping him alive, so sometimes there are multiple kippers in one video. It's a problem, but maybe if I have a giant powerful kipper, we will be fine. Anyway, I can't worry about that right now though, because I need to tame this electric griffin. So I finished farming narco berries, but I was once again distracted when one of my alpha dodos died inside my base. I thought something was in my base, meat running all my dinos, but it turns out the birds just starved to death. Dinos lose food pretty fast, when they're unconscious and I didn't have any food in the trough so I guess this guy just never ate after waking up from cryo sickness but it's fine I can do without one alpha dodo now I have to farm mythic blood mythic dinos are 25 times stronger than normal dinos if I remember correctly though they have a ton of health and put out a decent amount of damage even if they're low level so that's why I decided to use my rex to farm the blood to reduce the risk of any casualties and I managed to kill a mythic jerboa and a few mythic monkeys before I was jumped in the redwoods oh whoa, whoa it's electric Help, 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 help. Kill it faster. I died. The reason I sound so shocked that I died because that was actually my first time dying in this video so far. I'm not playing hardcore obviously, but I'd say going 35 days in a mod as crazy as this is pretty good. Anyway, I respawned back in my bed, which I luckily had decided it was a good idea to craft and place a little bit ago. And I flew my RG back over to my own murder site where I was able to get on my Rex, but I was once again jump scared by the same Thylo. There's another! Wait, no, it's the same one. Oh, it missed me. Jeez. Anyway, I put my Rex back in the cryopod and returned back to my base. And I then repaired my flak armor and was able to craft two more mythic trank darts and a few more alpha trank arrows before the end of the day. Alright, I should finally have enough of everything that I need to tame this thing. So I now should be able to tame this electric griffin. I really hope I can because I do not feel like doing any more work for it. So anyway, I set back out for Carno Island. And I did spot a Hydro Rex on the way back out there, but it wasn't near enough high level for me to actually consider taming it. And besides, I have to stay locked in on the real prize. Luckily, when I arrived, the griffin was still there. Alright, we're gonna try and kite it and tame it over on this little island so it's safe. So I set up the four stone gate trap that I also used for taming a rex earlier. Alright, let's hope this goes well, because I remember the last time I got jump scared by one of these things. <laughs> What happened next is what I can only describe as three minutes of pure mental abuse. It was three minutes of me leading the electric griffin into the trap multiple times, it getting out because of it actually being smart, or me not closing the trap fast enough. And this happened over and over. But eventually, it happened. Oh, now I can hit my bird. Okay, 
I think it's trapped though. My bird did have to take a few hard hits, but I was finally able to get the griffin inside the trap. So I then dropped my four mythic trank darts into it, which it then shot up to over 20,000 torpor out of 140,000. But I was more worried about the griffin getting out of the trap, since it looks like its hitbox was just barely big enough to stay inside the gates. Dude, it really looks like it can get out. But to my surprise and delight, the griffin wasn't able to get out, and I had more than enough alpha tranks to finish the job. Yes, it's out. And I shoved my elemental kibble into it right away, and I actually only needed two, so I had one left over. Yes! Yes! We got it! Oh my, this thing's gonna be a beast. Alright, let's cry up this pteranodon, and we're taking this for a test ride. Anyway, I named my newly tamed griffin, Leonida. And as you can probably tell, I'm very excited to have this griffin as my main flyer now. But what I forgot to think about is, it's probably been just less than a year since I've last flown a griffin or any flying dino with a swoop mechanic. And that sadly led me to be very bad at flying. So bad to the point where I actually flew into the water, got dismounted from my griffin, and then was torn apart by mantas as my griffin hovered above the water surface. Oh, come on. Come on. You're joking. Push me to shore. Push me to shore. Move. Ah! So it seems that me dying yesterday has set off a new trend. Anyway, I spawned back in on a beach that was nearby and began running back to where I died. And I had to outrun some modded dodos, which gave me primal fear flashbacks, but I managed to get my stuff and get on my Griffin safely. That was pretty traumatic, I can't lie. Moving on, I finally began flying back home. But that's when I spotted a level 110 alpha rex in a clearing on the side of the mountain. And taking a closer look, I found the perfect rex I needed to start my boss fighting army. Oh, female 140. That's exactly what we need. All right, we're gonna come back to tame this. So with that new goal in mind of taming that Rex, I began the now short flight back to my base as this Griffin is super fast. And I also tested about how much damage it could put out when I was doing this diving swoop attack thing. I, I don't know what to call it. I need a name for it. All right, perfect. How much damage is this thing doing? 5,000? Anyway, the Griffin put out a ton of damage as well, but I wanted more. So I devised a plan to get the perfect stats on this guy. It's got so much stamina already. I'm just gonna get 100k health and then straight melee. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day killing nearby dinos to level up my griffin and get more blood. I wanted to use mythic trank darts to knock out the wrecks since they're so good. So I also ended up crafting some more mythic narcotics just before the end of the day. I'm still out trying to farm blood and levels in the morning of day 37. And that's when I spotted a shadow rock elemental. My griffin now does about 7,000 damage per swipe, so it only took a few attacks to take it down. But it turned out to be a complete waste of my time because I didn't get any loot from killing it or any blood or hide. Anyway, I moved on with my life and discovered how to use the electric ability my griffin has since it's an electric griffin duh oh when you just do normal attacks then it shocks it so it can't move Thanks. i would finish my killing spree in a few minutes but before that i finally realized how much damage my griffin was actually able to do if i hit a headshot while using the diving attack oh if you hit a headshot it's twenty-five thousand damage okay yep i i can kill anything Anyway, after that, I finally finished my spree and returned back to my base with over a hundred mythic blood. And after some masterful crafting and chemistry, I managed to put together 12 mythic trank darts. And I had over 30 alpha trank arrows just in case. Alright. Let's go tame this Rex. So I flew out to the northeastern mountain on my super fast griffin and once again located the Rex. And I assembled a trap on this cliff that was sticking out, but there were some giant rocks in the way that may propose a problem when I'm actually trying to trap the Rex. Eh, screw it, we'll ball. So I spent the next few minutes trying to get this lovely looking lady into the trap, but it was not going well. The rocks were in the way and its AI was being super annoying. So I decided I'll just shoot tranks into it off the back of my griffin. And after putting all 12 trank darts into the Rex, it had just under 60,000 torpor. And it only needed 12,000 more to knock out, so I finished the job with alpha trank arrows. And I then put the alpha kibble into the Rex and had to swerve our rogue electric RG from it. But it tamed out to be alright. Alright, so the male came out better, but we can breed these stats out. It's not a big deal. We now have a breeding pair of Rexes on day 37, though. That's really good. Moving on, I put the Rex in a cryopod and flew down to a nearby beach to get some water before flying back to my base. And I did actually crash two times on the way home, just because the game likes to do that every once in a while. But once I finally did make it home, I didn't throw out my Rexes right away. I wanted to craft an automated arc fridge, so I can finally upgrade from keeping all my spoilables in a preserving bin. But I need more crystals, so I repaired both of my alpha tools and made a quick trip up to the volcano. And once I had all that I needed, I returned home and made the automated fridge with a thousand slots. I'm never gonna run out of space now. So after transferring all my spoilables, I decided to lay out my plans for my base expansion. Alright, but now that I have a breeding pair of Rexes, I want to expand my base area. I want to build, I think, a wall from that pillar to this pillar, and then from this pillar to the ledge. 
And that should give me enough space to breed all three boss fighting armies that I need. I don't even think I can fit one boss army into the area I currently have. But I actually need to build some walls to protect my dinos since there's actually dangerous stuff that could kill them. So with that plan in my mind, I need to start farming. I plan to use gates as the wall so I can easily get dinosaurs in and out. And I also plan to place some spike walls just to defend the areas that are a little weaker. I really don't want anything to get into my base and kill my tames. So I first started with farming a bunch of stone with my dodic. And I then flew over to the redwoods and farmed some wood and thatch. I'm starting to have PTSD flashbacks to when I was building my castle. Anyway, I was now able to craft two behemoth gates. And the rest of the day went a little bit like this. The first part of day 39 was pretty slow to say the least. I finished farming and placing the gates. I also added some spike walls around where the gates and rocks met to try and secure the area a little bit more. And now that I have a lot more space and it's safe, I think it's time to start working on my boss fighting army. And I also now have my first fertilized rex egg. But anyway, I need to get a few air conditioners to actually hatch this egg and future eggs. I discovered there were automated air conditioners that are probably more effective than normal air conditioners, so I decided to plan on crafting those. The crafting requirements for them are a little bit different though, but they're not too far off. And I'm just short out of the amount of silica pearls I need, so I mounted my electric griffin and flew over to where there are a bunch of those little icebergs. There are a few pearls under the water that I can easily get, and luckily I was just short a few pearls because I barely got any from these nodes. And I did also loot a blue drop with a ring and got another behemoth gate among other things. But after I got the pearls, I returned to my base, crafted more polymer, and got another fertilized alpha egg. And just before the end of the day, I managed to craft two automated air conditioners. I honestly don't know how powerful these things are, but I'm hoping I don't have to farm more because I basically drained all of my expensive resources right now. Day 40 and I'm gonna place these air conditioners on a small platform right outside my castle. But I'm currently too broke to make the foundations to actually place the air conditioners on so let me quickly do that. Alright, I have the four stone foundations, and I'm gonna plop them down right here, and then place the air conditioners on top, just like this. And luckily, just these two air conditioners were more than enough to be able to hatch this egg. The range of my generator is also very big, so I don't have to worry about making another one outside of my castle. Anyway, I put the air conditioners to use right away by incubating my first three Alpha Rex eggs. Remember, I still have to get the best stats on a breeding player before I start going balls to the walls and raising the army. But since the male has both the better stats, I only need to get a female with the stats, so this shouldn't take too long. And while the eggs are incubated, I decided to take Leonida out and farm some meat quickly to feed the babies if they're actually worth raising. But um they weren't. <laughs> all three eggs hatched and they were all either males or a female that didn't have the stats I was looking for. So I put them all down painlessly with my griffin. Who am I kidding? It wasn't painless at all. But after I killed all the babies, I noticed an alpha oviraptor right under my base. I want another oviraptor to chill by my rexes and pick up fertilized eggs. So I picked up the oviraptor, dropped it inside my base, and nailed it with a trank arrow in the butt and fed it some alpha kibble to tame it. And I moved it right under my rexes instantly so I'll never have to worry about picking up rex eggs ever again. Speaking of eggs, I hatched another, but it was bad so I killed it. It's a cold world and I'm only making it colder, but I have bosses to kill. Everything comes at a price. And sometimes killing babies is the answer. Alright, that sounds horrible. Next clip. Anyway, just after that, I hatched another egg and it actually came out as a female with the good stats. So you, my friend, you reserve the right to keep living. Congrats. I spent the rest of the day raising the baby. However, I did have some trouble getting an imprint on the baby. Either I had messed up my breeding setting since I last recorded my last video or raising modded creatures messes it up. Anyway, after a little bit of struggle and some setting changing, I managed to get a 100% imprint on the female by the end of the day. And before putting any levels into it, it had over 63,000 health. If I don't roll through these bosses, I'm gonna be mad. There's a random hydro turtle in my base. Is this Blastoise? I don't know. I killed it. Just thought I should let you guys know. A few minutes after that, the perfect female baby matured into an adult. So I then lined up the two perfect rexes and an oviraptor, and I will have hundreds of OP rex eggs before I know it. After making sure the oviraptor did its job and picked up the egg the rex has laid, I decided to take a gander at how much range my feeding trough actually covered. If I'm gonna raise boss armies, I'm gonna need to feed them. But luckily, this automated trough has a huge range. That one trough covers my whole base. Moving on, I want to leave my rexes alone for a little while so I can build up a decent stash of rex eggs to raise in two big batches. And while that happens, I want to at least tame an elemental or alpha thylo for caving and artifact retrieval purposes. So I pulled the resources from my fridge and crafted three elemental kibble and three alpha kibble. I don't really mind what thylo I take, but I can tame a lower level elemental thylo simply because they're more powerful than the alpha variants. Also, their special abilities might come in handy. Who knows? So once I had the kibble, I crafted another canteen to keep my 
myself hydrated, but I then set off into the redwoods on the back of Leonida looking for a Thyla to actually tame. And it didn't take me too long to find a level 55 electric Thyla, which doesn't sound too good, but actually, look at those base stats. I'll be able to run through any cave with those stats already, and it would only take one elemental kill with a tame it, so I decided to actually do tame it. It can't, it can't hit me for some reason. This has to be like a glitch with electric dinos, because the griffin couldn't hit me either until it finally did hit me. I think there's a glitch with electric dinos or something. I don't know. It could affect other dinos, but they weren't able to hit me that easily. As I said with the griffin, it actually did have a hard time actually damaging my PT. And this Styla is making me look like I'm in god mode, but I swear I'm not. This is a glitch, and I'm not complaining about it. Anyway, I got the Thyla knocked out and tamed. It's pretty strong already. I'm gonna still fly around the redwood to see if I can find any better ones. Yeah, so that was actually a lie. I returned to my base and remembered that I actually have one of the Tamer Bronto. I think a Beta Bronto would do just fine, so I crafted some Beta Kibble. But while I was doing that, my Oviraptor that was under my Rexus was actually killed by a Dilo. So I instead spent the rest of the day searching for another one to tame because I really need one under my Rexes. But of course, when you're looking for one, you can't find any. I finally found a Beta Oviraptor on the morning of day 42, but it didn't see me before I shine off a Trank Arrow into it off the the back of my electric griffin and the oviraptor tamed instantly with some beta kibble and i put it in a cryopod and took back off towards my base and after flying past a drop that was somehow stuck in the sky i arrived at my base to see that there was more dinos inside the walls of my base there was a dilo so i took it out so it couldn't kill the oviraptor that i just tamed don't really want history to repeat itself with this one but this is going to be a bigger problem later on i built these walls to keep the dinos out but they literally spawn inside so i'm considering putting a bunch of thatch foundations down inside the walls to hopefully block all the spawns but i'll probably put up another wall of spikes to create another section so I can safely breed my boss fighting dinos. Maybe that'll solve my problem. Anyway, moving on, I got my new oviraptor set up under my rexes and I flew back into the redwoods. I decided to check the giant trees once again to see if I could find any better thylas. I'm not totally content with my low level electric thyla, but if I don't find anything, this thyla should be able to handle the cave still. Five minutes later, and you can probably tell by my tone that I didn't find any thylas worth taming. And I even killed a bunch of them to try and get better levels to spawn, but nothing. Anyway, while I was still in the redwoods, I spotted a herd of three beta brontos and if you can remember i want a beta bronto for myself they were all low level so i locked in on one and shot a few alpha trank arrows into it until it fell asleep and i then killed the other brontos while it was unconscious listen it doesn't know that i killed its friends while it's asleep so what's the big issue i still have beta kibble in my inventory so i tamed the bronto but i had some trouble getting it into a cryopod because of a diplo who decided to just make my life harder why are you like this Oh my god. I then killed the Diplo and decided that I'll use his hide to craft my Bronto saddle. So if you've learned anything from this little excursion, just know not to make me mad. Or I might skin you. What? Moving on, I returned to my base and saw that I was short on fiber to craft the Bronto saddle. So I assaulted some bushes with a sickle, then crafted a saddle for my new green friend. And after that, I farmed a bunch of narco berries with my new Bronto, and it was much, much better than farming with my Iguanodon. Now, I have something kind of embarrassing to tell you guys. Towards the end of the day, I actually threw out my Electrothyla out of its cryopod with cryo sickness and it has quite a lot of torpor to drain still so i think i'm gonna have to tame another thyla even if it's a low level simply because i just don't want to wait for this one to wake up but i didn't have to look for too long until i found another electric thyla that was also level 55 so i proceeded to knock it out once again as it couldn't hit me electric dinos definitely had some sort of glitch while i was recording this but i didn't have any elemental kibble on hand so i did have to return back to my base to get it but i managed to tame the thyla all right and once back at my base i farmed some more fiber to craft a thyla saddle just before the end of the day day 43 started with crafting more alpha narcotics and eventually alpha trank arrows but i wasn't crafting these to tame a new creature more of to endlessly knock out one over and over again until it loses the will to live okay losing the will to live might be a lie but what i'm trying to say is that i'm going to use these tranks to knock out a megalania over and over again so i can get all the megalania toxin i need i need 10 toxin to start the alpha megapithecus boss fight and if you didn't know anytime you knock out a creature that has tributes in its inventory it'll wake up with more as long as you take the first ones out and i don't know if i've ever said this but i actually hate looking for megalanias to kill they're always in caves hanging from the ceiling or something stupid so i'd rather just spend a longer time bullying one over and over to get the toxin i need than hunt five down so now that i've explained my plans i had a newly tamed thyla in a cryopod and i flew out to the carno island when i arrived i did have to take down some creatures that were blocking the cave entrance but it wasn't hard at all since my griffin is insane and i then put my griffin in a cryopod and made my way into the cave with a thyla and immediately after emerging from the small pool of water i found a red drop which had an ascendant compound bow with over 400 damage on it i mean i'll probably never use 
use it, but it's really cool to have. Alright, I'm here for Megalanias and Megalanias only. I need to stay focused. I made my way down to the cave, killing tons of bats and spiders as I went with ease because my electric thylo was putting out over a thousand damage a bite. I knew it would be worth taming another electric variant. Anyway, to my delight, there was one Megalania who was all alone. That is, after I killed hundreds of his cave dwelling friends. Anyway, I began the process of knocking it out and extracting the toxin over and over again. And I did also retrieve the artifact of the devourer, which I also need to start the alpha megapithecus boss fight. But then another peculiar thing happened during this time. I noticed I got a Christmas present from killing a dino and I decided to open it. What? What mod adds Christmas present? Why did I just get element? That's crazy. I can't even use it. I mean, it's only two, but... Anyway, it's nice that I now have two element that I can't use. More importantly though, I finished the day with having eight of the ten toxin I needed, so I'll have to wait for this poor guy to wake up one more time so I can re-knock him out. The Megalania took just under five minutes to wake up in the day 44, and you guessed it, I knocked it out again. Finally, dude. All that I need. And before leaving, I decided to let the Megalania live after the actual hell I just put it through. Just kidding, I killed it on my way out. And speaking of my way out, I first scaled the walls to get out, and just before I was about to leave the cave, I crashed. Oh, I crashed. The crash didn't send me far back, however, I logged back in, threw out my griffin, and then left the island never to return again. Probably. But flying back to my base took a little longer than expected. Mostly because I crashed once again as soon as I started flying over the mainland. But once again, I logged back in and continued with my mission. And once I got back to my base, I deposited my new tributes and then started to stare off into space for a little bit. But what I was actually doing was deciding what to do. And after a few minutes of pondering my existence, I decided it's time to start raising my boss fighting Rex army. But I'm running pretty low on raw meat to feed my carnivores right now, so I took off on my griffin and spent a few minutes committing mass genocide. But this genocide was only motivated for the high amounts of meat. That sounded weird. Anyway, I got all the red stuff that feeds my carnivores that I'll ever need, and I deposited it in a trough and began incubating my first batch of Rex eggs. And the babies all hatched a few minutes later, and I then proceeded to name them all boss so I knew exactly which of them were bred to fight. But a few minutes after that, I realized a big, big mistake. I somehow had messed up my imprinting settings once again, and I wouldn't be able to get a 100% imprint on any of them. Imprinting gives a big boost to the Rex stats, so I really don't want them to go without it. So that thinking led me to commit mass baby Rex genocide. I killed all of them except for two. I kept these two alive so I could use them to get more Rex eggs because it takes me a few days to accumulate a decent amount of eggs. And I also plan to use the baby Rexes as my main way of power leveling my boss fighting army, so I'm gonna need a lot of eggs. But yeah, I didn't do anything for the rest of the day. I'm raising a new batch of baby Rexes in the morning of day 45, and I made sure to only hatch one egg first at a time to make sure I had my imprinting stats set right. And I did, so I I laid out the rest of the eggs to have the incubate and hatch as well. And I then spent the next 10 minutes raising the babies until I could get them all up to 100% imprint and to where I don't have to worry about them starving. And it's by this time that the two Rexes I spared from the last mass murder were now fully grown. So I wanted them to start producing some eggs as well. But once again, I ran into oviraptor problems. The one oviraptor that I did have under my Rexes didn't have enough range to be able to pick up all of their eggs. So I need to find and tame another. But luckily, I didn't have too much trouble finding another as there was a level 45 just right next to my base. But I made the mistake of using beta and alpha eggs to tame it. I had a ton of them because my dodos were producing them for quite a few days now, but the problem was they didn't have that much taming effectiveness, and it was taking so long in fact that I decided to just move my oviraptor that I had collecting dodo eggs out to under my rexes. Also, my batch of rexes that I started raising in the morning are now fully grown. I know my rates are pretty quick, but there's not really a reason for these to take too long, so I then moved my now fully grown rexes from the hatching area into a nice neat line so I can easily access all of them, and I ended the day by beginning to incubate a new batch of rexes. And and they had all hatched by the morning, and everything was going swell raising them. That is, until it came time to imprint them. I wasn't having a problem with my settings, but more a problem with the whole game. I managed to imprint on a few of the Rexes, but while I was working on doing that, I crashed. I didn't think it would be a big deal as I logged back into the game, but I realized that the babies didn't want an imprint from me anymore. They wanted an imprint from Granty, but... I'm Granty. My character name is Granty. How does this make any sense? I guess the game somehow thinks that I'm not on the same character that was used to claim these babies, even though I am. I can see this happening if I maybe crashed and my character gets deleted like in the last video, but I didn't lose my character. I'm right here. But to make this even worse, the babies that I imprinted before I crashed didn't even actually get the imprint I managed to give them. So I decided to once again commit mass baby genocide. And I terminated all the baby rexes on one singular rex. And let's just say these stats are nasty. Health goes up so much. 
Alright, we're getting our rex to 100,000 health, and then it's all melee. I have more to fertilize rex eggs, so let's try this again. I plopped down all the eggs to incubate and farm some more meat while they did so. And they all hatched, and I got the imprint on all of them easily this time. The end. That's how it should go every time, Ark. Why do you have to make it so difficult? Moving towards the end of the day, I was farming some more raw meat and hide off the back of one of my boss rexes this time. And I made the mistake of accidentally aggroing a shadow rock elemental. I mean, I've killed one of these before, but this time I found out the rocks that they throw at you actually catch you on fire. So that's always nice. Anyway, after nearly losing the rex, I had to return to my base on foot because it was too low to risk it being out in the open. I managed to somehow get back to my base safely. I honestly forgot how scary it can be running around foot on a mod like this. Anyway, I deposited the meat that I farmed in the trough, and I watched it get torn through by all my hungry dinos. How are you in the storage box? These chickens are crazy, man. Now, it's time to get back to the tribute grind. I still need the artifact of the pack and brute, but the artifact of the brute is inside the easy underwater cave, and I do not feel like doing all that right now. So, the pack artifact it is. I crafted a reusable grapple to make this trip a whole lot easier. And once again, all the mods I'm playing with can be found in the description. Anyway, I then hopped on the back of my griffin and flew out to the cave. And I also had my thyla and a cryopod. But once arriving at the cave, it took me a little while to actually get my thyla where I wanted it. But once I did, I began taking out the cave creatures. And one of them dropped a Christmas present, which of course, I wanted to open because I had gotten Element a few days ago, but uh, this one was different. Oh, I got Narc blasted? If I die to this, I'm going to be so mad. So yeah, this present actually really sucked. Luckily, I had managed to survive as I had already killed all the surrounding cave creatures, so I kept making my way through the cave until I came across another Christmas present. Luckily, it only had some advanced rifle bullets for me. They're not too good, but definitely better than getting knocked out in a cave. Anyway, I eventually made it to the last chamber before having to grapple to get the artifact, and I had to take down a Shadow Arthropleura, which is super strong. It seems that all the Shadow creatures also set you on fire since this guy managed to do it just by biting me, so I think I'm gonna try and stay away from these guys at all costs. Anyway, I grappled into the tunnel with the artifact, ran past a few dinos, got the artifact, and then sprinted back out to the safety of my thyla. And now that I have two out of the three artifacts I need, I feel pretty content right now, so I spend the rest of the day organizing my rexes. Day 48, I decided to set up another layer of protection for my dinos. I had a stone behemoth gate just laying around and some wooden spike walls, so I assembled an impenetrable wall that will be once again dividing my compound. It's definitely not impenetrable, but I'm really scared of anything spawning inside my base and killing my important dinos. And after that, I organize my rexes for a little bit more so that they are all on the border of my area and I have the middle of my base to do more activities. But moving on, I'm no longer content. If you've been paying attention, you know what I'm talking about. I think it's time that I go down and get the artifact of the brute that is in the easy underwater cave. But you might be saying, Grant, you don't have any water dinos to do that. And you're right, but I'm still crafting scuba gear right now, aren't I? Well, let me fill you in on my little idea. Alright. Hear me out, would a thi electric dialogue make a good caving creature? Water caving creature. It's super fast. It honestly swims pretty fast. <laughs> Dude, I think I'm gonna make an electric dialogue my creature. Yeah, so I have two electric dialogues, and that means one is expendable. These guys are pretty strong, which I proved by taking into other caves, and they also swim fast. So I figure if I pump some points in the oxygen, they can also be awesome underwater mounts. So I got the thyla up to around 700 oxygen. This is a thyla that I tamed and threw out of the cryopod of the cryosickness so I could put some levels into it. And I also renamed it Scuba Kitty. But after that, we were off. I decided to run out to the west coast on the thyla since it was close by and then dove headfirst into the water. This is so scuffed, but it's working. And I made my way through the cave into the artifact room with no problem. I did spot some electric eels on the way that I hope won't be a problem, but I should be able to kill them if I need to. And I dove into the water, got the artifact, but then the eels found me. I'm not sure. What should I do? Oh! No! I've come too far. I'll post up in this corner. That's right. That's right. I thought they would shock me off my team, but I guess not. I managed to survive the eel attack without too much stress, but it's now time to escape. Oh my god, there are so many eels. But lucky for me, my Thyla was able to swim faster than them, so I was able to make my grand escape. And once I got back to my base, I deposited the last artifact I needed to start the Alpha Megapithecus fight. Now, I have pretty much everything I need to start the fight, but I need to farm a few more tributes, but not too many, but I'll do that later. Anyway, my Rexes only have a fraction of their current max health, and they haven't even been leveled yet. So after doing some research, I found that there are healing potions that are super strong, but they require medical brews to craft. So I'm gonna need an industrial cooker, not an industrial grill. I realize I confused those earlier in the video. But I want to craft an industrial cooker from automated arc mod as it's cheaper and better. But I'm still gonna need to farm a little bit to craft it. And that started with me raiding some poor beavers home. But as I was flying back to my base, one of my boss rexes died. What? <gasps> Dog. Are you joking? 
So it turns out I should have invested in better walls. Somehow a fairy spawn inside my base got close enough to my rexes to aggro, then destroyed spike walls to kill them. This game is gonna drive me crazy. The first half of day 49 was spent getting everything back in order. My rexes were scattered all over the plateau because I'd whistled them on neutral to try and kill the fairy as fast as possible. So I had to get my rexes back in line and back in the breeding group so I can continue my egg production. And I also had to see in my tri blog just how many rexes I had actually lost. That was three rexes just like that. Now after that, the rest of day 49 wasn't that eventful. I spent a lot of time AFK mostly because I was pretty mad that my base wasn't even safe from stuff like that. This is supposed to be my safe space. Just look how many spike walls and gates I have. Anyway, I spent some time flying around with really no goal. I honestly can't remember what I was doing, but I returned to my base just before the end of the day and picked up my Anklia. I need to farm obsidian to make in the polymer for that industrial cooker, so I set out to the volcano to do that. I finally made it to the volcano in the morning of day 50, and I hit a few obsidian rocks before logging off for a little while. And here's a clear example of how long it takes for me to record these 100 days. I came back once again having no idea what was going on or what I was doing. It's been a minute since I played. I- what am I farming? Obsidian. Sounds good. I'll keep doing it. Anyway, I finished my obsidian run, but I couldn't remember what I was actually trying to farm for, so I'll have to craft a cooker later on when past me actually remembers. <sighs> This is why you can't take giant breaks between recording. I w I'm making something, but what am I making? Anyway, since I couldn't remember what I was actually doing at the time, I decided to focus on getting the last few tributes I needed for the Alpha Megapithecus boss fight. Alright, so I need Megalodon Teeth and Spino Sails. I decided to focus on the Megalodon Teeth first, since I only need to kill three sharks to get the ten teeth I need. And I ran out to the west coast on the back of Scuba Kitty, since it's still the best dino I have to do underwater missions with. But I was having problems actually finding a Megalodon. I mean, I had done a dino wipe recently to keep things running smoothly, but I was not able to find any of the sharks. I actually found two Basilos, which I killed for their blubber, because I'll need it later on before I found any sharks. What does a brother have to do to find- I need three megalodons, that's all I need. But I did get three megalodons I needed to kill a few minutes later, however. I really need to get better at not complaining so soon. But I did also take a mythic paracer down on the way back home for some more mythic blood. And nothing really happened for the rest of the day, just me crashing a few times. Day 51 and you're about to win is probably one of the biggest pro gamer moves of all time. I decided that it's about time that I power level my rexes by killing baby rexes because I want to fight the megapithecus in the next few days. And obviously I want to tame a lystro since they give dinos experience boosts for a short amount of time when you pet them. So I set out with my PT to the western beaches and searched for a little while and flew home with a beta lystro. And once I was back in my base, I got the lystro trapped inside my base while I made a beta kill to tame it and loaded a trank arrow into my crossbow. I then used said trank arrow to knock out the lystro instead of passive taming it like normal with kibble. I guess for some reason I was under the impression that science, technology, and the world hasn't advanced far enough for you actually be able to pass a tame a monodino with its preferred food. But I guess I'm just slow. And good thing for me because these lystros actually take a surprise surprisingly long time to wake up, so I decided to fly back out into the world and find another one to tame. Luckily, these things are everywhere, and it didn't take me too long to find another Lystro which I actually tamed with Mayho Berries before bringing it back to my base. And yeah, once I got it back to my base, I decided to eliminate the Beta Lystro from this world. Sorry, right, little bro. Anyway, I got my Lystro in place and started the process of power leveling my Rexes. I'm gonna hatch about 8 eggs per Rex, which should give each Rex quite a few levels. Anyway, while I was doing this, I finally remembered that I wanted to craft a cooker. Oh, I remember what I wanted to craft. I wanted to craft a cooker. That took like 2 hours for me to remember, but I got it now. So I finally got the 100 polymer crafted that I needed to make the cooker. And I also made this other weird structure that I thought I needed to pull items from other structures, but it didn't really work. Can't even remember its name. It did nothing. Anyway, the rest of the day was spent baby murdering, and it may well on my conscience for the rest of my existence, but it's looking to be very worthwhile. My Rexes are gonna do about 3,000 damage a bite sometimes. A52, I gave my newly tamed Lystro the classic name that I always give my Lystros, Cody. And the next 20 minutes were spent grinding away at leveling up my Rexes. It's pretty boring, but it's necessary. And if you're wondering about my Rex stats after leveling, they're sitting in about 100k to 110k HP and around 750 melee. Now, since Alpha Dinos are 5 times stronger than normal Dinos, their melee is way higher than it's said to be. But basically, I have an army of boss killing machines now. So moving on, I finally crafted my industrial cooker. So I can now farm and craft the medical brews that I need for healing potions to heal my rexes, but it'll take me a long time to do so. Mostly because it still takes me forever to craft narcotics as I don't have a chemistry bench. So I'm gonna bite the bullet and farm for a chemistry bench so I don't have to worry about this stuff again. However, I need 250 electronics to craft a chemistry bench. And I don't know if you've gathered it just yet, but I've been using a thyla to get around underwater, so I have no good way of getting silica pearls. So with me using all of my brain power to solve this problem, I 
don't need a good way to get pearls. I just need to get them. So I've decided to power level my Thyla and go all in. I'm gonna kill some baby Rexes with Scuba Kitty and put all the levels into oxygen. And I'm then gonna head to the southwest part of the ocean where there's a large concentration of silica pearls. And I'm gonna swim down there and collect all that I can with my hands and swim back up when I need air. And I'll repeat that until I get over 750 pearls that I need. I told you I don't have a good way of getting pearls, but I'm gonna get the pearls. So anyway, I enacted my plan. I killed a ton of baby Rexes with my Thyla just before the end of the day and got it over to 2,000 oxygen. This is probably the most cursed thing I've ever done in ARC, but there's no way I'm taming an anglerfish. I just don't have the patience to tame one right now. Day 53 and I did it. I had my Thyla and a cryopod and scuba gear in my inventory, and I mounted Leonida and flew out to where above the pearls are located. I then jumped in the water and threw out my Thyla, and I swam down to the ocean floor, and I had to take down a few eels, but after that, it was smooth sailing. But it was cold and it was dark, but I was getting the pearls that I needed. But seriously, I could farm all the pearls that I would ever need in less than a minute with an anglerfish, but as I said, there's no way I'm taming one in this video. So I spent over 10 minutes swimming around and pressing E on the keyboard. I would only get 6 to 8 pearls off each node, but I hit my goal. This is where dedication gets you folks, wasting your life away on a dinosaur game for in-game silica pearls, bruh. Anyway, I swam back up to the surface and flew home to begin crafting the electronics. And another resource I missed in to craft the chemistry bench is crystals. So I put my Anki into a cryopod and flew out to the volcano on my griffin. I didn't need a ton of crystals, so I didn't have to bring my Archie, who has much more weight than my griffin. But once I returned back to my base with the crystal, I was able to put together my new meth lab. I mean, chemistry bench. Anyway, I immediately got the mass crafting narcotics for medical brews. And I also learned that the pretty much the only cool thing about this chemistry bench is that it's refrigerated. It's pretty lame, to be honest. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day farming tinto berries for the medical brews as well. Day 54, and look how many tinto berries and narco berries that I farmed. Yeah, I really just made you jealous of the amount of berries I have in this dinosaur game. Alright, this bit is corny. Next clip. Moving on, I set up my industrial cooker right below my base so it could get irrigated by water. And after accidentally crafting a ton of red dye because I had auto craft enabled, I finally started crafting medical brews. And once I had all the brews, I brought them up to inside my base and combined them with mayo berries and crystal to craft an alpha health potion. This should shoot my rexes straight up to max health. Oh, we'll craft two at a time? Alright, let's hope they're as good as I think they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these potions are very overpowered. They heal tens of thousands of health in seconds. So I then proceeded to heal all my Rexes within seconds with these potions. So now it's time to actually get the saddles for my Rexes. The problem is they're very expensive, especially when it comes to metal. I think it costs about 50 ingots per saddle, and I have an army of nearly 20 Rexes. So I had to take my Anki out to the volcano with my RG to of course farm more of that shiny silver and white stuff. And I farmed pretty much all the metal on the very top of the volcano in a few minutes, and I returned back to my base to begin smelting it. But I made a discovery when I looked inside one of my chaos forges. Oh my- I did not need to do that metal run. Yeah, so I had a ton of metal left over from a previous run. Anyway, after that, I repaired my beta sickle and flew outside my base to farm more fiber for the saddles. And I had to take out Vanilla Alpha Raptor who was guarding the bushes, but he didn't stop me from getting the fiber that I needed. And I spent the rest of the day crafting primitive rex saddles. Because, let's face it, my alpha rexes are seriously powerful. If I need anything better than primitive rex saddles, there's a problem. I saddled up pretty much all of my rexes by the morning of day 55. I was still missing a few though, but I was pretty much out of hide, so I had to go on a little fight with my griffin that had absolutely no violence whatsoever in it. Anyway, I headed back to my base and promptly crashed. Nice. But I crafted the two last Rex saddles that I needed for my army. So now that everybody has a saddle and is fully healed, I think I can finally start delivering these bad boys to the blue obelisk. I only had 10 cryopods in my name, and some were being used, so I'm gonna have to make multiple trips. And it would take a total of three trips, so I made the first two to get the bulk of my army to the obelisk. And I returned to my base and put the last few Rexes into the cryopods, but I didn't fly back straight away. I wanted to farm some more medical brews for myself because the boss arena is very cold, and I didn't have any good for our armor to keep me warm. But while I was farming Tinto Berries with my Bronto, my Archie got attacked by a volcanic raptor who began burning it alive. Come on! Oh, it's, it's still dead. Come on, come on, come on. Cryo, cryo, cryo. Oh, we got out. Oh my god. Yeah, so it was a pretty scary way to end the day. But hey, at least I got a decent amount of medical brews. But if I die in this boss fight because I'm too cold, I'm gonna be so mad. So now you think I'm ready to fight this boss, right? Well, it turns out I'm actually missing nine Spino Sails. One of the worst tributes to farm. Oh, I didn't get Spino Sails. And I'm gonna be honest, I spent literally the whole day flying up and down the island's rivers, but I didn't see a single Spino. But future me knows I'd have much better luck on day 57, but it's still kind of ridiculous. Anyway, the only notable thing to happen was that my 
character got stuck like this for a little while. What? Oh no. What is wrong? Why is my camera angle like this? Hello? What? This is not right. This is, oh, there's a Rex. Relog. Day 57 and I'm cutting straight to the chase because I know what you're all here for now. Me flying around the map all of day 56 made a ton of spino spawn in so I got all the sails I needed. And I also crafted a bunch more medical brews so there's no way I should die in this fight. Anyway, I now have everything I need. Let's do this boss fight. These things were on the front line and barely took any damage. Yeah, I didn't even have a UD and I still shredded that boss. Like, it died seriously fast. And I'm now one third done killing all the normal bosses on the island. So at this rate, I think I'll use my Rexes to kill the Broodmother as well. But I'm probably still going to make an army of fairies to fight the Alpha Dragon. Anyway, I got my spoils from killing the boss and began to return home. But I got distracted when I saw a purple drop with a ring. It had an Ascendant Pump Shotgun Blueprint inside, which is really expensive, but it might be super useful. Maybe I'll craft it. Who knows? Anyway, I returned to my base and deposited all my gear and i also set up the megapithecus boss flag right outside my base and lastly before the end of the day i don't want to make multiple trips bringing my rex army home from my base so i want to craft more cryopods but to do that i need more crystal from the volcano so i set out there towards the end of the day with my ankleo and my cryopod i was smacking crystal with my anki in the morning of day 58 i farmed just over 300 crystal which was just enough to allow me to fly on my griffin with it without being encumbered but it definitely wasn't a quick flight because leonida was still moving pretty slow carrying all this weight anyway when i finally did make it back to my base, I threw my Anki back out of the cryopod so I wouldn't forget about it. And speaking of cryopods, I crafted 10. Oh, just kidding. I crafted 12, actually, it turns out. Looks like I needed some more polymer to craft the last two, which I made in my fabricator. But now that I have all these futuristic Pokeballs, I can bring my boss fighting army boys back home. And that's exactly what I did. I felt kind of bad leaving there on top of a snowy mountain after I made them just fight an angry ape on way too many roids. Now that I have literally my whole army in my pocket, it's time to do some stuff. Yeah. All right, I want to jump straight into getting the tributes for the Alpha Broodmother fight. As I said, I'm going to use my Rexes to kill the Broodmother instead of taming a Megatherium army to do it. You guys saw how fast that monkey died. The Broodmother is tougher, but not that much tougher. Anyway, the first tribute on my list that I needed was Sarko skins. I somehow only have a measly one after 58 days of playing, even though I have pretty much all the other tributes I need. Anyway, no use in complaining. Sarko spawn all over the map, so they shouldn't be too hard to find with my Griffin. But it did take me a little while to find my first Sarko, but once I found one, I found all the rest. The swamp is a gold mine for these things. So if you need their skins for tributes like me, go there immediately. I literally got nine Sarko skins I needed in the matter of minutes, so I was able to move on to getting the other tributes. I had pretty much all the tributes I needed from dinos, so it's really time to get the artifacts now. You need the artifact of the clever, massive, and hunter for the boss fight. And they're all a piece of cake to get, especially when you have an overpowered mod Thyla like I do. And they're so easy to get, in fact, that I didn't even return home before the end of the day. I went straight into the cave below the volcano to retrieve the artifact of the clever. Those poor cave plebs stood no chance against me. But I didn't actually claim the artifact until the morning of day 59. But yeah, after that, I just walked out of the cave with my prize and headed back towards my base. And when I returned, I deposited all the new tributes. And if you think I'm slowing down on the tribute grind now, you're wrong. I took back off as quickly as I came to my base. And this time, I'm heading towards the cave with the hunter artifact inside. And I actually had more trouble with this cave than I did with the cave of the clever. It was mostly caused by the insane amounts of arthropleuras inside. I was worried about getting my armor broken off by their acid spit, and there was also a few shadow arthropleurs, which if you can remember, they uh, set you on fire. So I decided to just run and jump over them instead of fighting. I don't feel like being on fire and having acid spit at me. But after I got around those guys, I was able to throw my phyla into the artifact chamber so it could take down all the bugs inside, and I walked in and claimed my prize. Now I only need one more artifact and then we can start the alpha broodmother fight. This might be the least amount of time I've ever spent grinding to start a boss fight. Moving on, I exited the cave and returned to my bit. Just kidding, I went straight to the lava cave to get the artifact of the massive because I'm a dog like that. And once again, I made my way in and out of the cave with ease. The only slight problem was that there was a demonic dialo half guarding the entrance, but I was able to slip by it with no problem. Day 60 started out with me delivering my boss fighting rexes to the green obelisk. I wasn't quite ready to start the boss fight just yet though. I wanted to leave them out here because they had all lost a few thousand health in the megapithecus boss fight, and I want them to naturally heal it back over the next little bit. It's not worth using health potions on them since it's such a little amount of health. But after getting all my rexes out of 
their cryopods, I return back to my base and grab some mythic trank darts. And I then set out towards the snow. I bet some of you can see where I'm going with this. I want to tame a Udoranus for the boss fight to give my Alpha Rexes even more of an edge. There aren't any modded variants of a UD sadly, but that means I'll be able to knock one out fairly quickly when I do find one. So now the problem is to actually find one. But this might be one of the most eventful times where I was ever searching for a dino to tame. One, because of this. What? Yeah, that sounds like a Megapithecus in the overworld. I really hope I don't run into that. They were just- Oh. Hey there. Oh my god. Yeah, that makes sense, and I'm gonna fly this way. Yeah, so I'm definitely not gonna be looking for a UD over there. And flying around the snow, I actually noticed that there were quite a few of these giant rogue monkeys, which were making it more difficult to find UDs. That is, until I found a level 145. Problem is that it's way too close to one of those monkeys. So I got down towards the ground, and I had a pretty low health since I just fought something bigger. But the bigger problem was that there was a monkey close by that would definitely kill me and the UD if we don't get out of here. So I got the UD's attention and started to lead it away. No! I was trying to break the tree. Yeah, so I was trying to break that tree that was in the path of me leading this UD away, but the UD got too close and of course it died. Why does Ark have to be like this? Anyway, I didn't find any other good UDs to tame for the rest of the day. Day 61 and I finally found the level 135 that wasn't in an active war zone, so I could actually try and tame it this time. UDs don't do that much damage at all when they're fighting, so I was able to sit right in front of it and shoot it with trank darts while it slowly chipped away at my health. Hello? <laughs> Stared at me. Okay. Now, since this UD is a vanilla creature, it's gonna take a little time to tame because I can't instantly tame it with kibble. So I took that time to fly around the snow for a little bit longer and kill other UDs as I need their lungs to start the alpha dragon boss fight. And I also AFK'd at my base for a little bit. I was definitely power washing the toilet bowl IRL. Anyway, I flew back towards the UD when it was nearing being done taming and I took it home as soon as it was done in a cryopod. But I encountered a problem when I arrived back at my base and went to try and make the UD a saddle. What? Dog. You gotta be joking. I need saddles need silica pearls. Yeah, so for some reason, UDs require a pretty hefty amount of silica pearls to craft their saddle. And I basically used up all of my pearls making the chemistry bench a few days ago, so this really soured my mood. However, I only need just about 50 more pearls to actually make the saddle. So I set back out over to the little creek by the snow that has some pearls in it. And it did take me a few minutes to get the pearls since there's such a low amount of them, but I got all that I needed. And I also spotted a level 110 Hydro Rex, but I really don't have much interest in taming it right now. My UD now has a saddle though, and that's all that matters. And I put the UD right to work by by mass murdering a ton of baby rexes. Oh, these are gonna take forever to kill. And it's I was right, nice UDs do basically no damage. And with these babies being born with a few thousand health each, it took the rest of the day for me to kill all the babies that I had scattered all over my base. Now that my UD is all leveled up, I'm now ready to fight the Alpha Broodmother. So I grabbed the artifacts and tributes from my storage box and made sure to give my UD a health potion so it is now at max health. And the leveling had given him a ton of health and stamina, so I should be pretty safe on his back now. Oh, and I also named him Chicken Master. All right, let's go do this broodmother pots. We're rolling through them this time. Probably because I have an army of OP Rexes, but hey. And since the time I threw out my Rexes at the obelisk, they were now all healed up to max health or neo max health when I got out there. They're pretty much healed and ready to go. Let's do this. All right, so I didn't fight the broodmother in my last 100 days, but from what I've heard, is that it, it's basically right on top of you as soon as you stomp, spawn inside of the boss arena. So I'm gonna be ready to go. Oh, I spawned on its side. <laughs> that was so quick. I love overpowered Rexes. Yeah, so I absolutely mopped the floor with that broodmother. Hopefully the same thing happens when I fight the Alpha Overseer. But I still have to fight the Alpha Dragon even before that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, I put all my Rexes and my UD back into cryopods and headed home to where I put the Alpha Broodmother flag right outside my castle as soon as I arrived. And after that, I threw my Rexes and UD out of their cryopods in the giant area I had gated off. It's definitely not the safest place since they're only behind one wall instead of like four like the rest of my base, but they should be fine, I hope. Moving on, I think it's about time that I start to find some things 
Therizinos to tame. I'm gonna use them to fight the Alpha Dragon after all, and I may even bring them into the Ascension Cave with me. So I got to crafting a stone trap. I had to farm a little bit of stone with my Dodic, but I was able to craft with everything else I needed. And I still had over 20 Mythic Trank Darts left over, so I should be able to tame at least one Therry just fine. But now it's time to actually find a good Alpha Therry to tame. And I've seen a lot of Alpha Therries in my time playing this 100 days, but I've never seen any amazing levels. But I guess I wasn't looking directly for them, so maybe I'll find a good one quicker this time. And speaking of the devil, I found a level 140 out by the Green Obelisk. Oh, hey there. So I set up a trap as you do and tried to lead it in there, but... Uh, it can get out. Okay, I gotta redo the trap. So I led the fairy away and remade the trap so it wouldn't be able to get out this time. But by the time I was ready to get its attention to get it back in the trap, I decided it was time to fight an electric rex. What, what are you doing? So that killed me on the inside a little bit. But more importantly, how did that theory not kill that Rex? I mean, I know it was an electric Rex, but that theory was level 140 and that Rex was level 35. I guess elemental dinos are way too overpowered. Anyway, I now have to find a new theory to tame now. So I packed up my trap and headed home to my base first though to regroup myself. And when I was ready to start looking once again later on, I spotted a level 130 beta theory right outside of my base. Whoa, beta 130. Well, I'm considering it. I'm really considering it. I really want an alpha. Now that beta theory is really good, but I'm really set on having an alpha theory army so they can be even better. Wait. No. The art gods have blessed me for what they took from me. Yeah, I don't know what the chances are of getting two high levels back to back like this, but I'm not gonna ask any questions. So I flew over to a small clearing and set up the trap, but I was soon distracted by a Christmas present that dropped from a dead dino. Oh. Anyway, I set up the trap, but I didn't have enough RAM, so I had to return to my base to get more, but it wasn't a problem. And after a little struggle of actually getting the theory inside the trap, I finally started shooting some Trank Darts into it. And immediately after this lovely lady tamed, I put her in a cryopod and brought her back to my base. And I then made her a shadow and gave her a name of her stats so that I could put some levels into her as I wanted to go on a little test drive. Yeah, this dragon is gonna stand no chance as she's already putting out over a thousand damage with minimal leveling. I also farmed a ton of fiber with my theory so I should never have a problem with that again. And I deposited all of it into my smithy in the morning of day 64. Now, most of day 64 wasn't too eventful. I spent my time flying around the skies of the island searching for another alpha theory to tame. This time, I needed a male. I'm gonna be really annoyed if I find another high level, but it's a female. Anyway, after about 20 minutes of searching, I came across a walking difficult choice. I found a level 110 male alpha theory. Hmm, level 110? That's honestly not great. I don't even have the kibble to tame it, but like, I could breed out the stats. I'll be back. I gotta go get the kibble so we can actually tame this, because I think I am just gonna tame it. Alright, I'm gonna have to explain my reasoning. A level 110 theory is just alright, but since my breeding rates are so fast, I'll be able to spend the time trying to get the perfect baby that has the female's good stats. So yeah, bada bing, bada boom, I'm gonna tame this thing. Anyway, I flew back to my base and crafted three alpha kibble to tame it, and I returned with just over 10 trank darts, which should be enough to knock it out. And I've decided not to set up a trap this time, as it was too much of a pain getting the theory in the trap like last time. Oh, it can't hit me. Oh, no, it can't hit me. Anyway, I knocked the theory out and tamed it with ease. But obviously, it came out with mid stats as it wasn't a great level to begin with. But that didn't stop me from putting the theory into a cryopod and flying home before the end of the day. I had my theories next to each other on day 65 so that they could start producing some eggs. I'd rather hatch a few at a time to get the stats that I want rather than just one at a time. And I also brought a few of my boss rexes closer to my base so that they could start producing more fertilized rex eggs so that my future theory army can power level and have really good stats. So now I have some time to kill that I'm waiting for my theories to produce eggs and I just so happen need to collect four artifacts for the alpha dragon fight sadly none of the caves have a super easy way to get the artifacts like I can't just run through with my alpha thyla and kill everything but the easiest out of the four caves I need to get the artifact from is the small snow cave with the artifact of the sky lord in it I'm kind of just throwing a pie in the sky here but I want to see if I can throw my thyla out inside of the cave with a cryopod and I then want to lead the bats and spiders inside the cave to kill them the cave is very very cramped so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it normally I would run this cave with a shotgun but I currently don't have one so i'm about to do this redneck style but sadly it wasn't big enough for me to fit anything inside the cave so i wasn't able to get this guy out of this cryopod and believe me i tried throwing this cryopod everywhere but i had to return back home empty-handed but remember that shotgun blueprint i got after killing the alpha monkey i figured i can probably farm it up and craft it even if it is a grind i can use it for the cave of the sky lord and the ascension cave but i'm gonna need to craft a ton of polymer and cementing base so i first got to farm in stone with my dodic but after only a few swings i remember that bevo busso's farm cementing paste when 
they kill bugs. And I live right next to the swamp cave, which has a ton of bugs inside. So I decided to put down my dodic and fly over to the nearby swamp where I discovered my new perfect tame. Oh, right away. Anyway, I picked up the frog with my RG and dropped it inside my base. But I noticed a mythic fairy was trying to break into my base before I could tame it. So I had to deal with that quickly. And once the situation was dealt with, I tricked out the frog inside of my base, which could have ended much worse. But all I managed to do was destroy one campfire I didn't use anymore before being knocked unconscious. And I immediately tamed the frog with some elemental kibble and I named it Hydro Kermit. And I was able to craft the frog's saddle, but the last thing deterring me from going into the swamp cave right now is that I wasn't able to craft a full set of scuba. You need scuba to keep the toxic air out inside the cave. Anyway, I need more polymer to craft the set of scuba. So I flew out to the volcano and spent the rest of the day farming obsidian with my Ankleo. Day 66 started with me crafting some cementing paste in my chemistry bench. And I then used that paste to make some polymer and eventually a full set of scuba that I needed. My game cr what? wasn't even looking. Now that I'm back in the game and not crashing, let's head over to the swamp cave to hopefully get a ton of cementing paste from killing bugs. And I also need to get the artifact of the moon that's inside of here as well for the dragon boss fight. However, I only spent a few short minutes inside the cave killing bugs before I saw a shadow arthropleura that I wasn't totally sure if I could kill. Some of the creatures that were spawning inside the cave were actually modded variants, so they were outputting a ton of damage. But I thought if I crafted some alpha health potions, I'll be able to make my way through the cave. So that's what I did. I returned to my base and crafted up a total of 32 alpha a health potions. This is definitely overkill, but I can save the rest for later on. Anyway, I then flew immediately back to the cave and started my rampage. I was getting swarmed, but the health potions are simply too powerful, so I was able to take down everything in the first room just fine, even the shadow or perplura. And I kept making my way through the cave. Nothing was stopping me. That is until I saw this message on screen. What? No. That happened in my last 100 days too, man. I sadly forgot to put Leonida in a cryopod, and she was also left on passive. It's completely my fault that she died. So now I no longer have a fast way to get around the map, but the pain subsided a little bit when I saw a red drop that always spawns inside the cave, and it had a Rex Saddle blueprint in it. It has a Rex Saddle blueprint in it. So that caused me and my frog to go full Doom Slayer mode, and I kill absolutely everything for that saddle blueprint. It was expensive, so I don't know if I'll even craft it, but I had to get something from this adventure, besides the artifact, that is. Anyway, I kept making my way through the cave, destroying everything in my path and drinking a health potion when I needed to. And I eventually got the artifact of the immune, and I left the cave. And I also had a ton of cementing paste from killing all the bugs, but I had to hop home because Leonida was no longer with us. But little did I know, this was a terrible, terrible idea. No! The Thyla was an electric Thyla, so I knew my Hydro Flog wouldn't be able to kill it. So I had to quickly respawn, run over with my Thyla, and take out the Wild Thyla just before I could kill my frog. Hydro Kermit nearly died. I don't know if I could keep on if I lost Leonida and Hydro Kermit in the same day. That probably would have been one of the most tragic days in history. Can I get an F in the comments for Leonida? She was a real one. Day 67, and now that the actual hell is over, I can try to go back to my peaceful life of trying to kill bosses. So let's get back to doing peaceful things. I have a bunch of fertilized theory eggs now, and I just need one of them to be born with a male with both the good health and melee. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. So I plopped a few eggs down and waited about a minute, and then a ton of baby theories emerged into the world for their first time. And luckily, a total of four fairies had all the good stats, and a few of them were female, but I got at least one male, and that's all I needed. But let's not talk about what I did to the fairies who weren't born with the good stats. Anyway, I was gonna raise these four babies and get an imprint on all of them so I can use them to fight the dragon boss too. So I wanted to keep with the theme of the day and have a chill day, so I mostly sat around making sure the babies were alright, but I did farm some berries with my Bronto. And later on, I did run around on one of my electric thylas, killing a few mythic creatures for their blood. Since Leonida is gone, I don't have an amazing tame for getting around anymore, so basically I'm just gonna have to cut to it. I wanna tame another electric griffin, okay? I know Leonida just died and I should spend some more time to mourn, but there's no way I'm flying around the map on a PT after I've experienced how fast a griffin can fly. I was farming this blood for mythic trank darts, and I'm gonna make sure I have more than enough darts to not stress about if the griffin will knock out or not. And I wasn't able to farm too much mythic blood, but mythic blood is mythic blood. And my four theories were fully grown by the end of the day, so I now have a perfect breeding pair. Day 68 started with farming some more narco berries, a little ways from my base for more mythic narcotics. I only spent about 5 minutes doing so however because berry farming is super easy when you have a bronto. And I managed to craft around 20 mythic narcotics which should come out to be about 10 more mythic trank darts. After looking through my storage boxes I realized that I no longer have stone dinosaur gates laying around. And I'm definitely gonna need a trap to tame an electric griffin. So after some quick stone farming with my dodic and wood farming with my theory I was able to craft 4 stone dino gates with ease. I was still missing some more mythic blood to be able to craft some more mythic ingus for darts though however. But after a quick 
quick little mythic dino killing spree on my theory, I managed to solve that problem, and I was able to put together 10 mythic ingots. But then a mythic bronto was spotted nearby, and I just know that dude is gonna give a ton of mythic blood and hide. So I of course had to take my boss rex out there to claim what is rightfully mine, and that in turn allowed me to craft a few more mythic trank darts before the end of the day. And it didn't take me long on day 69 to find a level 125 electric griffin. It's not incredible, but it's still very good. Also, these things are confirmed to spawn where RG spawns, so if you're playing this mod, I got you. I don't know why it's sitting, but alright. <laughs> I eventually found a good place to set up the trap, being the pathway leading to the volcano. It was long, narrow, and a good place for funneling a griffin. But once again, I had some trouble getting the griffin into the trap. Hello? Where are you going? But I eventually got it secured into the trap because I'm a pro like that. But just before I was about to start knocking out the griffin, I did some quick math in my head and realized I somehow didn't have enough trinking power to knock it out. So I had to return back to my base. And once I was actually back there, I whipped up some elemental trank darts, which are about half as strong as mythical ones, but they're still very strong. And I also crafted some beta trank darts, but I shouldn't have to use too many of these. Anyway, I set back out towards the volcano. But once I returned, I shot exactly two darts into it before realizing that I don't have elemental kibble. Oh. Griffin drain torpor super fast so i was worried i would knock out the griffin and by the time i got back with kibble it would have woken up this definitely would not have happened but i don't know i was panicking or something anyway i decided to ditch the griffin once again and go back to my base to craft some elemental kibble all right i've got the kibble nothing to stop me from taming this thing now and i shot trank darts into it for the rest of the night day 70 and i finished putting the trank darts into the griffin and it was asleep so i slid my freshly made elemental kibble to it and just like that leonidas it's a boy and maybe it's leonida reincarnated this is all just a conspiracy theory but it finally feels good to be back on one of these things. I'm so happy to be on the back of one of these things. Anyway, once I got my griffin back to my base, I put 13 small experience potions into it that I got, and then I got it up to about 57 levels. After pumping all those delicious experience levels into it, I decided it's time to enact my revenge on the cave of the Skylord. I haven't crafted that ascendant shotgun yet, but I'm almost 100% certain that I'll be able to fit my frog inside the cave. So I made a journey back after the cave with Hydro Kermit and a cryopod gonna make sure to put this in a cryopod so it does not die again. And to my delight, Hydro Kermit was able to be thrown inside the cave. It just wasn't able to move too much. But it turns out I don't even need Hydro Kermit because there's absolutely nothing in this cave. I can't remember the last time I did a Dino White, but it's definitely been a while. Anyway, I got the artifact and pieced out. I didn't cheat, the game cheated itself, alright? And once I got back to my base, I deposited the artifact and did some berry farming. But this time, it was to feed my future fairy army because I decided it's time that I start doing that. Also, I didn't tell you guys that I had to go on a whole side quest because I crashed and had to re-get the artifact of the Skylord, but there's still nothing in the cave, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, I began incubating my first batch of theories before the end of the day. Day 71 went about how do you expect after I said it's time to start raising a boss fighting army. The main goal of the day was to raise both batches of theories, and that's what I did. But a few other key things happened. First, between day 70 and day 71, I updated all my mods. Now cryopods now look like this. They look pretty weird, I can't lie. And I don't know why they were changed, but they were. But I don't care enough to look for another cryopod bot mod so they're saying like this secondly i also updated primal chaos mod which actually was a really big update it added a ton of new sea creature modded variants as well as a bunch of balance changes and the most notable one of these changes is that electric griffin's damage were nerfed to oblivion i'm now doing like a tenth of the damage that i used to be doing with this thing i mean i don't care that much because it's still pretty strong and fast but like come on leonidas is kind of weak now lastly this isn't that big of a change but it honestly might be a glitch my alpha theories are now eating meat instead of berries i spent the whole morning wondering why they were about to starve, and I realized they weren't eating the berries in the trough, so I threw some meat into the trough, and sure enough, they ate it. Anyway, thank you for listening to my TED talk. Most of day 72 was uneventful, most of it. I decided to clump raising and leveling my theories into a few consecutive days. By this point, my whole army was raised, and I had a ton of Rex eggs stacked up, so I got to it, slowly going through my theories one by one, massacring baby Rexes. That is until the reaping happened. You're joking. Oh, I'm getting meat ran. Oh my god. You're joking. A demonic dialo had somehow made its way into my base and killed more of my already dwindling Rex army, and it even killed my Yudi. Chicken Master only saw one boss fight before he was taken out of this world by an actual spawn of Satan. You can see that thing was putting out about 5,000 damage per bite. The rest of the day was spent regrouping what Rex says I had left and leveling my fairies. I decided I'm gonna keep my boss armies in the pods for now on since obviously I can't keep them safe inside my own base. Stuff getting inside my base and killing my creatures is really starting to make me angry. You should feel threatened right now. Day 73 and I was doing something that I never do. I was killing babies. Yeah. 
I tricked you. Subscribe or I'll kill your firstborn. Back to killing baby fairies. I was finishing up leveling my boss army as I usually do. And I did that for about the first five minutes of the day so that all my boss fairies are basically unkillable now. I hope at least. Moving on after that, I realized that I'm starting to come to the end of this 100 days. And also, since I'm planning on storing all of my boss diners in cryopods, I don't want to take the chance of them getting killed. I dismantled the outer gates of my base. I picked them all up, including the behemoth gates. But instead of putting them in a storage box never to be used again, I decided to replace them back down in front of my now last row gates and spikes. So now basically if anything spawns right outside my first wall of defenses, they can't see into my base. I'm hoping this ends the now constant cycle of dinos getting into my base and killing my creatures. But I don't really have that many creatures left out anyway. Oh well, I want Egg, my Oviraptor, to be safe. After that, I finally killed the last batch of Rexes, so now my Therry army is fully leveled. But just as I was finishing up putting the last levels into my Therry, my life was taken by rogue unclaimed Alpha Rex. My Therry's managed to take it down with ease since there was like 20 of them and one Rex, and I did get my stuff back. But I was pretty perplexed about how I actually got killed on my own base by an unclaimed Rex. My only theory is that the Rex that attacked me was somehow glitched under the map, and when I killed the last batch of baby Rexes, it was like, wait, I need to kill that Granty dude. And it just did that. Anyway, I'm gonna put that event into the past because I have more important things to focus on. And what is that important thing I actually have to do? Well, farm crystal, it turns out. I wanna put all my boss fighting theories in the cryopods just like my Rex army, but I was pretty much out of cryopods once again. So I took my Anki back up to the volcano to farm exactly 200 crystal meth. Just crystal for cryopods. Anyway, when I returned back to my base, I crafted 17 cryopods, which would be enough for the last few theories I had left. And after crafting all those, I spent the rest of the day healing my theories with the special red liquid. Notice how I'm not putting theories into the cryopod just yet? That's because I still need saddles to put on the theories for extra armor. However, most of my stock of hide was depleted when I crafted all my Rex's saddles, so I need to farm more. So that's why I spent about the first five minutes of day 74 trying to farm hide with my theory. I say trying because I wasn't getting very much. There were demonic dilos everywhere that were scary me because they're probably harder to kill than some of the bosses. So that's why I decided to switch to Leonidas and spend the next five minutes killing bigger dinos like Diplos and it was much more effective. And I then returned to my base and I was able to craft all the theory saddles that I needed. And I also put them all into cryopods so now I'm locked and loaded. That didn't make any sense. Moving on my viewers, I still need to get some tributes from the ocean. I still need to get the artifact of the cunning, I think it is. It's in the hard underwater cave. But I also need to get two so tentacles and a few more Vassalo blubbers. And I really don't feel like trying to get the artifact right now because I'm probably going to need a better underwater mount to even attempt to go into the cave. So basically, I'm gonna swim around the ocean mindlessly for the rest of the day. Day 75, however, I came across an Alpha Tuso. Now, you might be wondering, is it a modded Alpha Tuso or a vanilla Alpha Tuso? And that was exactly what I was wondering as well. But luckily, it was a vanilla Tuso, meaning I could get more tentacles than I actually needed. And I can also get the Alpha Tuso eye, which I need for the Alpha Overseer. Anyway, I viciously attacked the squid, and it was a battle for the ages. Just kidding, I crapped on it because I was on a modded Thylum. And I had more trouble actually swimming in circles trying to hit it than I actually did having to put out enough damage to actually kill it. And I decided to return back to my base and safely deposit the new boss summoning goodies I just got before I go back out and do any more adventuring. And while I was returning, I got scared because that demonic dial looked like it was heading straight for my base, and I also crashed, so that's nice. And after logging back in, I deposited my newly acquired tributes and set right back out because I still need to get another six Basilo blubber. And I had the same plan of just swimming around the ocean on my electric dial and killing them as I found them. And and that's exactly what I did after getting jumped by rogue trilobites. With the new update that I talked about earlier, it added a ton of new modded creatures. And it also made a few modded creatures which don't usually attack the player. Well, they now actually do attack the player, say it lightly. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day swimming around the ocean and killing. And I found and killed the last three Basilos I needed for each of their two Basilo blubbers. And I also crashed on the way home back to my base. Day 76, and now that I have all the ocean tributes that I need besides the Artifact of the Cunning, because like, screw getting that right now, I need to retrieve the Artifact of the strong that's inside the ice cave. I'm gonna use a few of my boss theories to brute force my way through the cave, so fighting through won't be a much of a problem. But the bigger problem is, is the cold. It's called the ice cave after all. I need more medical brews to keep me alive in the cave since it's so cold. And I'm gonna use one of the soups that I can't remember the name of right now to keep me warm as well. So anyway, I started day 76 on the back of my beta Bronto, swinging away at bushes, getting the sweet red berries that I desire to make medical brews. And after farming a metric buttload of those things, I combined them with narcotics inside my industrial cooker and I made around just a hundred brews. And right after that, I set off for the ice cave. Once again, I made sure to put my griffin into a cryopod so the events of the swamp cave did not happen again. And I worked my way through the entrance and throughout my theory where I thought I would be able to squeeze through. However, I wasn't able to, and there was a monkey blocking my way in, and it took a little bit to kill since I couldn't get its attention. But after I did finally kill it, I realized I was dying way too fast to the cold to make this sustainable. So I put my theory back in its cryopod and returned back to my base with the new goal of making fur armor.
armor. I honestly don't know why I didn't do this the first time around. Anyway, I made the fur armor with pelt that I had collected for playing for 76 days, and I returned back to the ice cave more determined to leave with the artifact that I came here for, and I spent the rest of the day beginning to fight my way through the cave with my theories. I originally had thrown out three, but I realized having two follow me was just too much, so I eventually put one back in a cryopod and began a cycle of throwing one out and having the other one watch my back. It was efficient and powerful. It took me about 15 minutes into day 77 to leave the ice cave with the artifact of the strong, but during that time, I nearly died many times, which I'll have my editors put on screen right now. Oh! Nope. That's why I have another. And just as I was trying to put my theories into a cryopod and leave the cave, you can see the exact moment where I got jump scared by a polar bear. And you can also hear me knocking over and spilling my water bottle on my desk. Oh! Anyway, I killed the polar bear and cleaned up the water IRL and then returned back to my base with my newly acquired artifact. And later on, I saw that I still needed more UD lungs, aloe brains, and more Rex arms. Bruh. I feel like I've been farming tributes since the dawn of time. But duty calls, I have to go get those tributes whether I like it or not. I cannot end this video on an L like I did in my last video. So I spent the rest of the day flying around the snow killing UDs, but I only managed to kill a whopping three UDs, so it's barely enough to make it plural. But I only needed four more UD lungs anyway, so I don't know why I'm complaining. I had my fourth and final UD lung that I needed by the morning of day 78 though. So now I can move on to collecting Allosaur brains and Rex arms. And that's what I did for pretty much the whole day. I killed a few Allos and a few Rexes, but by the end of the day, I still didn't have enough of either of the tributes that I needed. But what I do have is five seconds of this entertaining piece of content of me killing those Rexes and Allos that I think you'll find very amusing. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much all I did on day 78. It was pretty lit. What am I saying? It sucked. Day 79 started with more killing. I took down another pack of aloes for their brains, but there's actually a level 150 hydro aloe in that pack. Level 150? Jeez, if I wanted an aloe, it actually came this. And yeah, I killed it. I needed to brain more than I actually want to tame it. And I took down a few more aloes later on, so I finally have enough of their brains. And the last dino tribute I need to collect before the dragon boss fight is Rex arms. But speaking of Rexes, I actually discovered a vanilla alpha Rex on my way home. And I killed it with my griffin. I don't think it gave me any Rex arms, which is kind of a bummer, but I did get an alpha Rex tooth, which I do need for the alpha overseer. And I'll take that any day. So anyway, I spent the rest of the day searching around the map for more Rexes to kill. I had six arms so I only need to kill another 5 Rexes to get the 15 total that I need. But I literally only killed 2 in the last 15 minutes of the day. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, I was having a hard time finding these things. It's pretty much what I said earlier. You can always find something when you're not looking for them, but as soon as you even think about looking for them, they all fall off the face of the earth. Or fall off the face of the Ark, in this case. Day 80, I found and killed a Beta Rex, and I looted a Red Drop with some good stuff inside. But more importantly, I only need 3 more Rex arms. But I'm so over trying to look for Rexes to kill right now, so I've decided to go on another side quest. Well, it's not really a side quest as I do need to do it. Since I'm not having very much luck getting the last few land dino tributes I need, well, frankly, it's driving me insane. I've decided to bite the bullet and look for an ocean mount who will be able to fight my way through the underwater caves. So I grabbed my scuba gear and scuba kitty and flew out to the west coast where I plunged into the ocean once again. And at first, I didn't really know what dino I was looking for. I mean, taming an elemental basilo could be good, but those are probably pretty hard to come across. And I also pondered the idea of taming an elemental plesiosaur since I saw plenty of those. But I ultimately decided against it as I had a ton of torpor and you actually have to knock them out with weapons to tame them. And that would be made even harder given the fact fact, I can't use my long neck because it's underwater. But a little later on, everything changed. I spotted a level 25 Hydro Tuso. Now, obviously, level 25 isn't good at all, so I don't want to tame it. Don't worry. But this made me realize that elemental Tusos do actually spawn, so I figure if I look for long enough, I can find one. So I spent the rest of the day scanning the ocean for a better level elemental Tuso. One of those bad boys would definitely be able to get me through the hard underwater cave easily. Day 81, and I was still moving down the east coast ocean, looking for a Tuso who would be able to join my armada. And my hopes were starting starting to dwindle as I've been around half the map since I saw my last Tuso. But that's when I eventually made it into the southeastern part of the ocean, behind Herbivore Island where I killed that Alpha Tuso a few days back. And that's where I spotted a level 135 Volcanic Tuso, and just look at its stats already. But I'm not even sure if I'll be able to tame it, but I have to try. So I immediately swam up to the nearby Herbivore Island and threw up my Griffin to fly home. The Volcanic Tuso is going to take three Elemental Kibble to tame, so I'm assuming I'm going to need three different creatures to sacrifice to it so I can feed it three times. And if you don't know how 
how Tuso taming works, let me explain it to you. Basically, you let the Tuso grab one of your dinos, and then you dismount your dino and swim right up next to its beak and shove some black pearls in there. But of course, since this guy is a modded Tuso, I'm gonna shove some elemental kibble in there. And speaking of elemental kibble, I returned to my base and made the three I would need. But I need three dinos to sacrifice to the Tuso. And obviously, I don't want to sacrifice any of my good or favorite tames. And the dinos that I use need to have good health to be able to survive the Tuso sucking the life out of it for a few seconds before I feed it. But after I get the feed off, I don't really care if they die. I'm kind of heartless like that. Anyway, I eventually decided to raise three baby fairies and use them as sacrifices. They'll have a ton of health even without me imprinting them, so they'll be perfect. So I had to three and name them all sacrifice because that is what their one purpose in their short life will be. I spent the rest of the day waiting for them to fully mature as there wasn't much else to do. I probably should have hunted down the last few Rexes I needed to kill, but honestly, screw that. My fairies were finally raised a few minutes into day 82, and I pretty much wasted no time in putting them into cryopods as well as grabbing my underwater thyla and heading back out to the southeastern ocean. And I also brought some experience potions with me that I hope to use on the Tuso as long as this all goes well. So I threw out the first theory as the Tuso was approaching and my plan was working flawlessly so far. The Tuso then grabbed my theory just as I had planned and I began to swim towards it as I was trying to feed it the first kibble. But uh, yeah, this happened. Yeah, so the fairy died way faster than I thought it was going to, and I had my mic muted on accident during this day, and the day surrounding it, but just know, I was screaming. Anyway, I managed to make my way into a nearby pro cave to try and figure out what was happening, and I quickly realized I had forgotten to heal my fairies. They had a maximum of like 30 something thousand health, but their actual health was nowhere near that because they were just born literally less than an hour ago. So that was definitely my fault, but this didn't deter me. If worse comes to worse, I can use my Thyla as the last sacrifice and try and tame the Tuso before it kills it. So taming a volcanic Tuso round two began. I got the Tuso's attention, threw out my theory, and here we go. Well, uh, yeah, so it turns out you don't need to feed the Tuso multiple times. If I knew that, I would have been a lot less stressed. Anyway, I now have a literal volcanic Tuso. So I swam back up to the surface with my new Tuso and put it in a cryopod and flew back home to my base. I gotta make this boy a saddle. And that's exactly what I did. I returned to my base, unlocked the engram, and pulled the resources to make it a saddle. And once I had done that, I immediately set out for the hard underwater cave. And I then saddled up my Tuso, fed it some more experience potions, and pumped it full levels so that I had even more insane stats, and I lastly fed it a health potion to get it to full HP. And thinking it was basically unkillable now, I swam head first into the cave. But I can't lie, I was getting rocked. All the little cave creatures were swarming me and I was barely able to kill them fast enough. But this is a minor setback and I'm about to have a major comeback. I decided to fly back to my base before the end of the day. And you may be asking why. Well, I'm gonna craft even more of those alpha health potions for one reason. They're a cheat code. I have a maximum of 400,000 health on this Tuso, so I can heal hundreds of thousands of health in seconds. If I have like 20 of those things, let's face it, I'm not dying ever. I'm somehow out of crystal again on day 83. I swear I've had to farm that stuff like a million times. Anyway, I flew out to the volcano and just farmed it by hand with my pickaxe because honestly, I didn't need that much. And when I returned to my base, I crafted a bunch more alpha health potions, so I should be able to finally get the artifact of the cunning now. And yeah, I think you can see what's gonna happen next. I flew back out to the cave and threw out my Tuso and ran the cave with no problem. Or that's what I wish happened. Well, the first two parts were right, but the running the cave with no problem part wasn't that accurate. I made my way through the biggest parts of the cave, killing everything in my path knowing that I had an extra cheat code in my inventory, and I had 19 to be exact. Anyway, I continued to make my way through the cave until it was time for me to go into the hole in the ground where the artifact is. You see, I knew creatures spawned in there, but I was sure I was going to be able to outswim them with my Tuso to where I could kill them. And it was actually working, and that is until I got right next to the artifact. A group of eels managed to pop out of literally nowhere and chase me. And as you can all imagine, I wasn't able to outswim them. Now, I didn't really know what to do here. My powerhouse of a Tuso was inside the cave, and I didn't really have any other good water mount. So, looks like it's time to go back to the old faithful. I respawned back in my base, grabbed some scuba, and the two sacrifice theories just in case I need some last resort backup and scuba kitty. And I flew back out to the west coast on Green Goblin, who I was less than excited to be on the backup again. Anyway, I finally made it back out to the west coast after half a century of flying and deployed scuba kitty. I only have one shot to get back to my Tuso. If I mess this up, there's no way I can get this artifact and kill the dragon within the next 10 days.
Yeah, what can I say? I clutched up. I tend to do that literally all the time. Anyway, I return back to my base with the final artifact that I need to start the Alpha Dragon boss fight. And I believe the only tribute I don't have now are the three Rex arms and two Giga hearts. Yeah, I completely forgot that I have to find and kill two whole Gigas. But I don't think it'll be too bad because as soon as I started looking, I found one on the right snow mountain. And I was able to take it down with my Griffin because I can fly and the Giga can't. And it's a skill issue on the Giga's part, okay? Anyway, I still need to kill another Giga, but that's gonna take some time for that spawn in. And luckily, as I was circling the other snow mountain, I found a level 150 UD. And if you remember, my UD died while I was in my base from a rogue dino attack. So yeah, I want to tame this. So I immediately flew back to my base and whipped up some trank darts and returned. And I was able to knock it out with only three darts or something like that. And I left some prime meat in the UD before flying away. It's going to take a little while to tame, so I have some time to do basically whatever I want. And with that time, I spent it mostly flying around the nearby mountain, searching for another Rex or Giga to kill. But I found neither. So later on, I returned back to my base to chill for a little bit before flying back out to the UD to check on it. And when I got back out there, uh, it wasn't there. It looks like it was under the ice inside the map somehow. So I tried to relog, but once I relogged back in, it was Thanos snapped from existence. I literally just got scammed out of a max level UD because this game can't remember how ground physics work sometimes. I know I complain a lot about this game, but it's because I love it. But come on, that's kind of ridiculous. Anyway, before I flew back to my base in Rage, I actually noticed a level 80 UD nearby. And obviously this UD isn't good, like at all, but I literally decided to tame it out of rage. I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I knocked it out and used its Carno minions as food to tame it before the end of the day. Day 85, and I sat with the UD to make sure it tamed. Once again, I was running on pure rage after losing that level 150 to a stupid glitch. And the UD tamed out to be a level 119, and if you couldn't tell, it sucked. Anyway, I brought the UD back to my base in a cryopod, and I promptly leveled it up with some experience potions, and I also used an alpha potion on it to heal it. And after that, I farmed a bunch more Tinto Berries for medical brews. If you can't tell, it's almost time to fight the alpha dragon. Anyway, I did have to kill a vanilla alpha raptor that was guarding my industrial cooker, but I got my sweet sweet medical brews in the end. And after that, I spent the rest of the day circling the five main northern mountains searching for a giga to kill. I think if I consistently hit all the spawn zones, a giga will spawn pretty fast. Day 86 and my strategy worked. It worked very well. Oh, there's two. <laughs> Well, I'm about to kill both of them to lava. Yeah, literally two gigas spawned in the exact same area. This also happened in my vanilla ASA 100 days. I wonder if this is a glitch or something. Oh, well, I don't really care. I got the two giga hearts in a matter of minutes. Anyway, I returned back to my base, and it now looks like I have all the tributes I need for the alpha dragon boss fight. Listen, I know I'm pretty sure I didn't show me killing the last few rexes I needed for their arms, but cut me a break, okay? I'm sifting through 50 hours of footage, and it's 9.30 p.m. on a school night right now as I'm writing this, so I've been ready to jump out a window for only almost two hours now. Anyway, I grabbed all the tributes from my storage box, all the fairies and the UD and the cryopods, and I crafted a few more sets of flak. And just like that, I was off to the red obelisk to fight the dragon that took me down in my last time here. I cannot let that happen again. And I arrived at the obelisk and threw out all my army. And I then arranged them so that they would all get teleported into the boss. And it's time to take down the last boss that's standing between me and fighting the alpha overseer. He's coming to the land. Oh, quick! Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. whoa! Okay, can't stop moving. Cannot stop moving. Cannot stop moving. Please, I don't want to be in this arena anymore. Yes! Okay, that was so easy. Okay. I did it. I killed the dragon. And you know what I did to celebrate? I went back to my base towards the end of the day and deposited all my stuff. And I then stared off into space. Yeah. It was pretty lit. Day 87 and I can't stop now. I've killed all three world bosses and I only have one more to go. And I really only need a few more tributes to actually start the boss fight. I need an alpha megalodon fin, an alpha lead, um, whatever they drop, and an alpha mosasaur tooth. Those items are all obtained by killing underwater creatures. So I grabbed my scuba and my tuso and headed back into the ocean. I'm not leaving this ocean until I have all three of the tributes that I need. That last sentence was definitely a lot. Anyway, I started my search. And about halfway through the day, I spotted an alpha mosasaur, which I killed. But its item cache literally despawned in front of my eyes, so I wasn't able to get its tooth. Don't tell me the bag despawned. But I later found another alpha mosasaur, and of course I killed it, and I actually got its tooth this time, so that's a big plus. Anyway, I kept swimming down the ocean because I still needed two more tributes, and I kept swimming, and swimming, and swimming, until... Day 88! I don't know why I got that hype. I'm still looking for an alpha megalodon fin, or an alpha lead, um, dude, I really have to figure out what they actually drop. I think it's some type of blubber, but I honestly don't know for sure. Anyway, I kept swimming, and and crashing, of course. Oh. 
I've been looking for you. Yeah, the lead didn't last too much longer after that clip. And I was right, the lead drops blubber. Now all I needed was an alpha megalodon fin, and I can now open up the alpha tech cave. And not even five minutes later after that, I found an alpha megalodon that I needed to kill. Yes. Last one. And once collecting the last tribute, I returned to the surface, put my Tuso in a cryopod, and flew back to my base. Alright, we have all the tributes. Now it's kind of just time to start getting everything I need. By getting everything I need, I mean getting everything I need to actually make my way through the tech cave and killing the alpha overseer. I mean, I could technically go and do it right now, but I probably won't survive. Anyway, the first thing I'm looking to do to prepare is to craft a ton of medical brews. And I mean a lot, a lot of medical brews. The tech cave is super hot to the point where you lose health super fast. And the overseer arena is so cold to the point where you lose health super fast as well. Why couldn't the developers meet in the middle and make a nice happy medium? I think a tech cave and an overseer arena with a crisp temperature of 68 degrees and a light breeze wouldn't hinder the difficulty of the final boss of the game at all. Alright, I'm gonna go farm my medical brews now. I farmed Tinto Berries with my Beta Bronto until the end of the day. I started crafting my first batch of medical brews in the morning of day 89. And yeah, I said first batch. I wanna have at least 500 medical brews because I'm taking no chances with this. And I also need around another 100 medical brews to make a ton more alpha health potions for my creatures. And I would also learn later on that the alpha health potions also work on players. So I'm going to become basically unkillable as long as I'm not getting swarmed by everything under the sun. Anyway, I also got narcotics crafting as I was going to run through those pretty fast if I'm crafting hundreds of medical brews. And after that, I threw my RG inside a cryopod as well as my Bronto and headed over to the side of the volcano. I was looking for a better place to farm berries that has more bushes. And there was a pretty good spot just outside of the cave that has the clever artifact inside. And the rest of the day was pretty mindless as well. I crafted more medical brews and got more meat to make more narcotics for the medical brews. I told you guys I'm not taking any chances this time. Okay, day 90. Oh my god, this is so cursed. Alright, let me explain. So, as I'm writing the script for this video, the video file is looking to be corrupted. Basically, the whole 35 minute length of this file looks like this. But sometimes when I play the video back, it looks completely fine. So, I honestly have no idea if this footage is going to be usable, or if it'll look like my computer got hit with a stun grenade the whole time. So, I'm gonna try and look through the insanely saturated green tit and distorted pixels to tell you what I did during the day. It's looking like I mostly just farmed Tinto Berries for medical brews, which is no surprise. But I also think I crafted more armor. Flak mostly just in case I lose a few pieces inside the cave somehow. And that's all that I did, I'm pretty sure. I honestly don't know, okay dude? Look at that screenshot. How am I supposed to be able to tell what's going on when I'm playing the video back and it looks like that? Who knows, the video could be playing perfectly fine for you guys and you might be seeing something that I actually didn't see. Oh well, the rest of the days are fine, so I'm just gonna move on. Day 91 and I started to run into a problem. Not a corrupted video file. Thank god, that was horrible. But this problem also really sucked. I was running in the crashes. Are you serious right now? Are we Dude! This is gonna drive me crazy. It's gonna be the downfall of me. Bruh! Okay, I'm- Yeah, you guys heard that. That's probably the angriest I've ever got playing this game. I think I crashed a total of six times on day 91, which is absolutely absurd. Anyway, I did manage to achieve a little bit of progress between crashes and rollbacks. I made a few soups to either keep me warm or cold inside the tech cave and arena. And I also farmed a bunch of crystal and made a bunch more alpha health potions. Yeah, as I said, it was a very little amount of progress. Once again, this is probably the angriest I've ever been playing Ark. Day 92 is where it becomes literal hell. I was trying to farm polymer from killing pain penguins to make ghillie armor to try and keep me cool inside the tech cave. So I made it out to the snow on day 92 and I did find some penguins and I killed one, obviously. But as soon as I went to start farming his dead body for the organic polymer, I crashed. Oh, are we serious? So I logged back in as you do after a crash, and I managed to successfully get the organic polymer and return back to my base. But as soon as I dismounted my griffin inside the base, I crashed again. And guess what? When I logged back in, Why? I was back out in the snow. But I did still have the organic polymer in my inventory. Alright, if I crash, I'm gonna lose it. I only have a few more days to record in this video. I've been working on it for two months. I'm going insane. I just want to get this stuff, beat the alpha overseer, and then not touch this world again. Anyway, I made my way back to my base once again, and I was able to actually get fully ready for the boss fight this time. I had a ton of health potions, multiple armor sets, the tributes, and all my dinos and cryopods so I would throw them out inside the volcano. Dude, I think I'm ready. <laughs> Why? There's no way I'm back in the snow. Oh my god. Yeah, it's taking everything within me right now. I want to die. Anyway, I got ready for the boss fight once again. All right, I'm ready to do it. But if I crash, I'm gonna delete the channel. Guys. 
After taking some time off and doing some research, I think I have a plan. Okay, this is my last hope. I'm on some beta thing for single player saves that Wildcard rolled out today. If this doesn't work, I, I can't finish the video. So I have genuinely no idea what this actually is, but it's some beta test that I'll put the details of on screen right now. I was willing to try anything at this point. So with me playing on this weird single player beta test thing, I set out for the volcano with everything I need for the fight. And I did make it there all right, so I began the process of throwing out all my dinos and lighting them up so they should be able to follow Got each other inside thing. the cave. So just like that, I said goodbye to Leonidas. I'll hopefully see him on the other side. But if I didn't, he knew that I had died in that cave, probably. Also, I know I'm not playing exactly 100 days, so there's no way I can play any more of these constant crashes. Anyway, I opened the Alpha Tech cave door, and I now have five minutes to get all of my tame creatures inside Bit, before the door barely. shuts. about this come on guys better path funding to come in clutch right now we'll get them way farther down oh there's some stuff right there oh no come on okay okay they're getting in they're getting in a little bit fun, I don't care I just need everything in the cave and then I can worry about organizing them Dude, almost halfway out of time let's hope these stairs go smoother right, come on Congo line let's do this where are all my Rexes my Rexes are gone my Rexes are gone my Rexes are- Dude! Everything's gone! Okay, I can't worry about that right now, I guess. My theory- My theories are gone! What?! They just despawn. I have 28 seconds and none of my dinos are in here. Come on. No! Come on, get in! No! How many theories do I even have? I have like- I have- what, eight, nine theories at most? So as you guys can probably see and hear, most of my army despawned inside the cave while I was transferring my creatures inside. I'm pretty sure it's some single player glitch where the game can't load the caves in the overworld at the same time, which is an absolutely awesome feature. Anyway, I now have either eight or nine alpha theories to make my way through the cave and now kill the overseer. My only hope is that I noticed a bunch of the cave creatures that also despawned with my boss dinos. So if there isn't too many creatures blocking the way, I may be able to make it through. Anyway, I kept making my way through the cave, killing the creatures when I needed to. I was also impressed by the dino AI as my theories were smart enough to not walk into the lava. I did get into a scuffle which where one theory died however, so I was down another one, but I had to keep moving. I eventually made my way into the teleporter where no dino spawned, so I successfully made my way through the cave. But now I actually have to fight the boss. I better beat this. So I did it, I beat the Overseer, but I don't think it was the Alpha Overseer. I mean, you guys clearly saw me activate the Alpha one, but there's been a known glitch going around where no matter what boss terminal that you actually activate, you will always fight the Gamma Overseer. So I technically still haven't beaten the Alpha Overseer yet. I guess you guys are gonna have to wait till my next video to see me do it.
So, um, yeah, that was definitely the Gamma Overseer because my implant was green. But you guys saw me start the Alpha Overseer. And I'm pretty sure this is a known glitch, so... Bye!